It's Friday, February 2nd, 2024, and we are back for some TV, some film, and a throwback to Blade Trinity 2004 with Scotty Scoop, The Giggler, Sam the Sleeper, and I'm your host, Logan. Lots of fan mail, a lot of prizes coming up to shows local to records and vinyls online, and a fan voicemail to feature some news from the TV and film industry, as well as our What You Sharing. Lots of good titles catching you up on recommendations on what to watch, read, and see, and the meat. Yes, Blade Trinity. Wesley Snipes is doing it again, and we're going to talk all about it. This is Mostly Superheroes. It does kind of like, I don't know, I can dance to it. <laughs> it's got those drums. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. I thought about trying to get words. I like words. Mostly <laughs> super. I think we're wow. heroes. He's really thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We're here. That's staying in. Here it goes. Mostly, mostly, mostly. Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Was that Black Jack? <laughs> I Scotty think. Scoop in the house singing the Mostly Superheroes theme song for the first time. And I'll be here all night, And folks. screaming to your metal riff that just melted your <laughs> face, I guess. Welcome to the studio. I'm Logan. That's Scotty Scoop. Jeez. Scoop! Man, well, whatever. What do you take this Friday Coming afternoon? Coming with some energy. Didn't know he had the pipes. Uh, there's, uh, there's a little gap in the curtain. Something might have flowed through. I'm not sure. <laughs> that was crazy. That was like real. You got some pipes. I could blow. Yeah, wow. That's been a hidden secret. Uh, <laughs> karaoke night on Most of Superheroes Let's coming go. up. Yeah. G- Giggler. Hey. Andy. Great to see you guys. It's somebody. It's, it's the best pre-show we've ever had. Oh, today. the patron so, pre-show is what honestly, you paid for today. I'm just going to go ahead and plug the shit out of it. So uh, if anyone isn't signed up for Patreon, it might be the good week to do that. And it's somebody's birthday. Thank you. Andy's birthday. Woo! <laughs> Wednesday, the big 36. 36. Yeah. 36. Man, what Good was... Stuff. How do you feeling? Fine, honestly. Pretty, kept it pretty low-key, just had some pizza. Low yeah. pasta. Steph took me to dinner at uh, O&O Pizza. It was really, really good. O&O, nice First shout out. I've ever been, and uh, I will, I'll definitely be back. And cool. you got a fun weekend planned, a St. Louis weekend. Yeah. Going to do good. some Max Local Eats burgers. It's Mardi Gras season here in St. Louis, so it's going to be like taste of... Soulard. Soulard. Yes. yes, burgers and Soulard. That's the plan. So all right. See you all there. Sam the Sleeper back again. I, I'm losing count. I'm going to do better this time, guys. What Have you I'm been gonna, doing bad? I don't know. <laughs> I just going to be better. <laughs> I'm going to do better. Every time. Every just gonna, better just, time. Guys, I'm going to do better. I swear. I swear. This is the really? one. I'm going to crank it up to three this time. I think you always say that, too. You're always like, how many times has it been? It's like, it's... I, I, don't, I don't think you have to count anymore. You just, <laughs> no, I've you, actually you, lost count. You're just here. Welcome back. I'm, I'm happy. This is where you want to be to kick this off your is weekend, where right? I want to be. All right, man. Dude. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching uh, Blade Trinity for this podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. Half yeah. of us. Uh, did most of us see it today? Three out of four Three saw it today. Four. I watched four it saw, today. And someone saw it. Yes, you saw it yesterday. So far, Tuesday, I think. My okay. God. 2004. Excited to break open the film. Tell you about who made it. Get into some nerdy stuff at the meet. Uh, but we got a jam-packed episode. We got the, all the segments back. Interviews are happening. The format's been changing, but you can see we're trying to find a flow to get that format of fan mail, what you share, and news and rumors, like always to you, no matter who we're talking to. Um, but we have a lot of new types of episodes coming out, too, that we'll highlight uh, a little bit later. For now, let's do what we always do in the beginning of our episode and highlight some fans. Fan mail. So much happening in fan mail. We want to hear from you at 754 Call Log. Leave us a message. We are featuring a voicemail in just a second. First, we want to highlight some contests. You can win a contest to win Blue, the album by Weezer on vinyl. And also, an event coming up March 17th here locally around the St. Louis area. The Factory is hosting One Night of Queen. This is a tribute to Queen performed by, I have the name here, Gary Mullen and The Works. This is a Sunday, March 17th. Doors open at 6.30. The show starts at 7.30. All ages 
can go to this thing. Two tickets could be yours. You could enter in a number of ways. If you're seeing this on social media, comment below. If you are entering at our website, go to MostlySuperheroes.com forward slash contest, fill it out. And you can also give us a call at that call log, 754-CALL-LOG. Tell us that you want to enter. 18 plus to enter. Terms and conditions apply. Would love to send you guys to this show. And we did another giveaway. We didn't have this one on our socials. It happened really quick. Sometimes these happen really fast. But keep an eye on the socials and to see these types of things. Monster Jam was here in St. Louis. And we sent Hunter H, uh, one of the cutest, coolest kids in town. And I know this because, listen to this voicemail, a little message from Hunter who wanted to call us after attending Monster Jam. Can I say superheroes? For the ticket, I love I love Monster Jam. It was so loud. I loved it. I love mostly superheroes. Thank you. I mean, cutest thing ever yep. in the most like obvious like a parent telling the kid what to say script. Yep. yep. It was like, yep. all right, listen. You, you, it was Monster Jam, and you love mostly superheroes. Because I, I think he loves Monster Jam more than mostly superheroes. Oh, for sure. It was very loud. It was very loud. Hunter, oh my God, this kid. I wish I had a I picture mean, of him. Oh He's the cutest kid. God. So, so, so cute. You know, you know, Red, Hunter. Redhead. Yes. You know, we gave him tickets for the whole seat. I know he only used the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen to that voice, <laughs> little like, guy. That makes you want to have kids, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's. Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking both of the kids. The, the kids kidless, kids. the kidless yes. guys over here. I, I've no got problem. some to spare. If you guys want? To <laughs> Hunter, congratulations! Love that you had fun at Monster Jam with the fam, uh, and we'll get more stuff out just like that. Love doing these new contests on the show, and we'll keep that happening. Next up, let's talk about some news. News and rumors. A lot happening in the news world. Some local stuff. I like to bring in some comic book stuff. How about that? Scotty, Let's do it. You like that. And the Giggler took a special trip to Apotheosis Comics here locally in St. Louis yesterday for the birthday. Got a whole slew of treats. You might have to give me that picture. Oh, yeah. Um, and included in that was a big announcement from a superstar musician, Scott. You might recognize the name Kid Cuddy, makes his comics debut alongside Eisner Award nominated co writer Kyle Higgins. Uh, with That's uh, what creator or author of Radiant Black. Looks like. And breakout artist Marco Lacati in the extra-length first issue of the biggest book of 2024, Raymond is ready for a quiet life. Whatever went wrong, that failed moon mission. Whatever happened in the missing minutes, the cameras didn't capture. All he really wants is to settle down back home. But those missing minutes hold an earth-shattering secret, and with all eyes turned to him, Raymond will soon find himself becoming something the world has never seen before. Uh, thank you, Apotheosis Comics. So tell me about, what is this called? It's Kid Cuddy's book. It's Moon called Man. Moon Man. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll give yeah. it up. It's pretty cool. You were pumped about this. Both you and Stephanie messaged on Instagram immediately. Yes, both both are huge Kid Cuddy fans, so this is a, a endeavor that I needed to get into for sure when I saw this was announced. So uh, I this will be my first, like, toe-to-toe, front-to-back, like, comic book that I go, like, go with because I've never really bought any before in my life, in my adult life, like, so I bought those gifts from Apotheosis for you guys Christmas, and then I, I went Wednesday and picked up about six or seven, which I'll yeah, I'll get, Logan, I'll send you that pick. I got yeah, good, you got a good some, haul. Some sweet Marvel fanfare <clears throat> um, comics that he he recommended, uh, and the nice two dollar comic bin, bin. There's so many. There's just so much there. Like I could I could be in that place for hours. It's crazy. nice. Shout out Apotheosis Comics yeah. on on Grand. I can't wait to go like record there for sure. I just picked up some other random like I just saw like a Batman one that I was like, all right, got to get a Batman one. Yeah, we're recording there this month. We're yeah. Just in a couple weeks. Oh my god, yeah, it's coming up. Uh, so you got the comic. You got to see it in action. This is not the first time we know of artists doing graphic novels and books. So cool. And I mean, yeah. Kid Cudi. I mean, that's like worldwide big. Yeah, the first I read through it Wednesday, really good. It's just short. It didn't get much further than really this description just said. Like it's basically there's there was a a, a a space mission and main character who's more or less that's that's Kid Cudi. He's he's gonna be the Moon Man, I guess. Basically, there was a seven minute period where they disappeared or something went wrong, and <clears throat> um, he starts to have little side effects uh, that you see, which are leading to potentially he's gonna be have some sort of powers. This is awesome. So cool. Scotty, have you been aware of this? Does this pique your interest? Was, uh, this, was, it, was it news to you? Yeah, this is news to me. Um, it, it looks, the, the artwork looks amazing. I don't That's know a, a whole lot about Kid Cudi. Yeah. Um, What's but, his big songs? Like, I don't either. 
uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Oh yeah, that's, that's huge. Uh, okay, he has like a, a few three albums titled Moon, Moon Man. So, all right. Um, and in the same vein, another band drops a graphic novel. Uh, the Midnight, a uh, huge fan of this band, and uh, they ordered. Or, I'm sorry, they came out with a graphic novel that I'm looking for the title of this. I think it was just the Midnight, no. was it not? Shadows? <laughs> Shadows. The Midnight Shadows Limited Ultimate Graphic Novel Bundle. So they have this whole bundle. You can buy this uh, at uh, themidnightofficial.com, I think is their, their main website. And they have a store that, where you can buy this. And I wanted to read what this graphic novel is coming out about, too, because the story sounds really cool. An electrifying original sci-fi comic adventure inspired by the poetic storytelling of The Midnight. 20-something young man Jason is on the precipice of parenthood with his childhood sweetheart. Struggling with the loss of his adolescence, Jason is sucked back into The Midnight, a cyberpunk game from his childhood. As the helmeted hero who travels to the post-apocalyptic Neverland in the year 2085 is the hero who once vanquished the Shadow Monsters, and they believe he has returned to his actual reality to do it again. With two different realities beckoning, and beckoning him home, Jason must reconcile which world he belongs to and how he can embrace adulthood without losing himself. Boom. The Midnight Shadows. I mean, bands making... I mean, we always talk about the connection between music and storytelling. Mm -hmm. Like, music is storytelling. And then a lot of songs are literally stories. And man, talk about... Coheed and Cambria can't like has to come up when we talk about this stuff because yeah, I feel like sure. they have the most epic like graphic novel saga yeah, the, that uh, you're probably Amo aware of. Amori Wars, yes, for sure. Um, man, lots of stuff there. Yeah, and like um, that's deep cut stuff. So now, yeah. now we're seeing some of these like new age bands like kind of dip their toe in this. And I've there's a band that I'm escaping, but it's the band that came out with the comic for the Umbrella Academy. Oh, uh, that's Gerard Way of. of uh, uh, My Chemical Romance. Yeah, and I mean, one of my favorite shows on Netflix. I mean, it's yeah. like they're about to like have their wrapped up great, season five. Like, great books. I've got those books. They're they're amazing. So shout out to the Midnight and Kid Cudi. Yeah. This is, I mean, both of these artworks cool. This, this one looks a little Tron. Tron before you said graphic or cyberpunk, I was like, it's got a very cyberpunk, like almost Vice City vibe. Yeah, look at that helmet, like the yeah. like the pink lightning. Yeah, I mean, that's like shadows. That's like, I mean, this looks like their album. Yeah, Tron was my first thought too. Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of people cool. on uh, social media like replying with the Tron gifts right away. Okay, so next up uh, in you know weird news, Jonathan Major verdict. We've been talking about it, Kang the Conqueror. What's going to happen in this case? From ABC News, he was found guilty of misdemeanor assault and harassment in a split verdict in his first interview since a jury found him guilty of assaulting and harassing his ex girlfriend. Jonathan Majors says he was shocked and afraid upon hearing the verdict. I'm standing there, and the verdict comes down. The quote says a little bit more. ABC News, I actually watched this sit down on ABC. Uh, it was a very interesting, uh, by, by interesting, I mean not that interesting of an interview. <laughs> it was just kind of like, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it, it seemed like a move. I got to I gotta have an a interview. I'm not, even, I'm not even saying, like, I'm, I know what his actual – verdict is but you it just the the piece itself from abc was like 40 minutes long it was like he didn't really answer any questions it was just felt more like okay we had an interview with him let's move on yeah. we have to say something we have to yeah. say something yeah. um but man this i mean immediately after like i think within 30 minutes marvel studios cuts him this verdict obviously is has changed everything there's footage uh and this is obviously changing the whole world for Jonathan Majors and his career and the case is ongoing and he says he will appeal and try to like fight this um but man you know I don't think it's gonna help anything no I mean and I was we, one that was like hey let's just see what they find out because like I hate when people just instantly like he's guilty because it's happened to ba that baseball player uh I forgot I'm now I'm blanking out on his name and he ended up going playing baseball somewhere uh Bauer. somewhere else Bauer yeah Bauer and Trevor then Bauer yeah and, and he it was all made up, and mm -hmm. I was like, "Can we just wait?" And and then that video came out, and uh, and then the text messages, which and then there were some reports from people who had worked with him in the past. Yeah, and you're kind of like, "Oh god!" I thought that I, stuff was more damning than the video. Yeah, the video I didn't think showed anything, but then the text messages were like, "Don't say anything about." You know, we won't have to get too much into the details. No, it's like but... that though. It's like that with this case too. You look at the footage, and you're like, "This is pretty damning," and yeah. you're, you know, it's 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 such a domestic thing that a lot of the uh, like the reporting on it was. A lot of these cases you would never even hear about. It would it would be like uh, it would be gone in a civil case immediately. But like there was no chance for that like ever with the 
high profile case. Exactly, exactly. Like I'm not saying that, like that that has its own impact on a case. If you're a worldwide celebrity, it changes like per, the court of the personal landscape. opinion yeah. of everything. Yeah, whether if like if you're a no name and it's like you and your girlfriend like kind of hashing it out with yeah. like an attorney in a in a room, like it, it might not be the same, but I don't know, you know, this the girl is the one his girlfriend, his former girlfriend is the one that this happened to and that she decided like I got to tell somebody, yeah. you know? So tough situation and now Marvel news, what's going to happen? There's all sorts of casting rumors. Oh. There's a lot you know, put into this yeah. guy. Loki, They're going to recast. Loki kind of put a pin in it in a good way, yeah. so we'll just see. There is a guy that I think would be a great stand-in, and he has not come up on any list I've seen. Who? Andy. Um, I was just Andy. thinking that. Andy yeah. Hunt. Now that I got that, act, I got the acting bug now. now I forgot what his Let's name go. is. I'll right. think of it at some point, and we'll, we'll bring it back up. Um, okay, so then we have some casting news in HBO Land. House of the Dragon, you might recognize Millie Alcock. All right, this girl... You might know her. She's now going to be Supergirl, confirmed by James Gunn. Supergirl. Wow. What a job. And, uh, you know, meanwhile, Sasha Kali is just somewhere like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Poor girl. <laughs> C- Carrie goes, I thought they already had, had a girl. I was like, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> right. God. That's, the Flash destroyed the timeline. We'll never see her again. Maybe a multiverse or something. I thought I thought Sasha was 20 good. years. I, I like this one. Yeah. I like Millie. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, there she yeah, is. We're exciting. watching House of the Dragon right now, so super relevant for me. I'm like, okay, this girl's good. Yeah, this is exciting for sure. James Gunn, we're ready. It's time, 2024. Yeah. Uh, all right, mixed news here. We have Star Wars, that's right, Mando and Grogu confirmed by Star Wars, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, the Mandalorian and Grogu, Grogu movie. Oh, I'm giving it up because I love this show. Bring it into the big screen. It's gonna be like maybe a wrap up story. It seems like I, I would I would assume so. Um, and we had a, f- a nice fan mail on this actually uh, from Instagram Jose, who is at J Rabe Low Zero Seven, says glad the Mandoverse is making the jump to the big screen. Glad to have Star Wars back on the big screen. No kidding. Always waiting on like those big Star Wars mo- yeah. movie titles. Now you're getting the Mandalorian. Jose, thanks for that comment. I imagine we'll have this sometime next year. Yeah, 2025 probably. Uh, Dan will be here for that. We'll definitely be talking to our friend Steve Ewing with, from The Urge and Steve's Hot Dogs, a big Star Wars fan. And then breaking news today on February 2nd, 2024. Unfortunately, super sad. I mean, completely adjacent to The Mandalorian. Carl Weathers has passed at 76. And as, I'll, as always, we give it up first for their life and their career. Legend. Absolute legend. Yeah. R.I.P. Happy Gilmore, Rocky, Predator, The Mandalorian. Uh, I mean, you said Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed. Uh, this is the guy, and yeah, seventy six. I didn't. I this is right before we sat down, so I don't even know uh, how or anything like that. Uh, but man, R.I.P. Yes. Carl Weathers. Yeah, Chubbs. such a great part of Happy Gilmore in my childhood. Dude. Predator. Chubbs. I, Chubbs. I, that I, wooden I hand from Predator the most. The alligator. When pre- that broken hand when he uh, shakes that. <laughs> It just all breaks during oh, the shake. Oh, handshake. you know what else? Uh, Arrested Development. Oh my oh, god! Oh yeah. Oh my. He plays That's himself, cool. and he's like the acting coach for Tobias. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's like, I don't need any money. I just, you know, we could get me that, get me that bone, and we could make a nice stew with it. Like he, that's like a, that was the thing. He'd, he'd always like say he'd want to make it a big stew. I gotta watch that episode again. <laughs> yeah. He. They bring him yeah, back a couple friend. times. Oh man, Carl Weathers, man. R.I.P. Rest in peace. And with that, we'll go the other direction and fire it up with some energy in. What you sharing? What you watching? Which is still what you watching? Because I don't have time for anything. What you? Up <laughs> I barely have time to sit down here with you guys and talk about this stuff. I'll eventually change the segment intro, okay? I'll, and I'll, I'll sing it. All right, now I want to talk about what we watch though, and I'm gonna give it up to Scotty Scoop to go first and tell us about what you're sharing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? Uh, we could talk about Rebel Moon. Rebel um, Moon. Rebel Moon. Zack Snyder, Zack Netflix, Snyder, Netflix. Star um, Wars thing. Tried to be a Star Wars thing, but yeah. it's not a Star Wars Pitch, thing. Pitched as a Star Wars uh, film trilogy. Oh, uh, man. Um, anybody else watch this? I started to. On yeah. Netflix? I also started to and did not finish. <laughs> same, yes. Same. But my um, fault, on the phone, 
all the all the classic signs. I need to go back. I want to watch it right before the sequel. So I guess I, I guess I'm saying keep it spoiler free. Um, yeah, because fault. it's such an original do, story, and I want to watch it. Just, I started <laughs> yes. too late. Okay, a very night. very Have you seen original it, story. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, there's a very uh, original story. Very very original story. Okay. Um. You got Sophia Batella. You've got uh, Charlie Hunnam, Anthony Hopkins in this movie. Um. Ed Screen, Scrine. Um. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this is not good. Oh, that's it. It's not good. <laughs> this is not. Good. I was. I'm like sitting here. Like you're wearing a Star Wars shirt. I'm yeah. wearing a Star Wars <laughs> shirt. Um, tell us what what happened. This this was just not. Did you give it a good watch? The sum of its parts. Okay. Oh, I gave it a good watch. You watched, and I it. watched it. I, I think it was maybe Friday or Saturday of this, last week. Oh, this is fresh. So this is pretty fresh, and as Zach Ni- uh, Snyder, as per usual, a very visually beautiful movie um but it was just the acting was flat the plot was flat this just did not come together it it was very not great um well he's he's supposedly putting out an r-rated cut before the second movie comes out which is that gonna help i don't understand you think you're gonna add a BJ and it's gonna be good? What? Yeah. Yeah. Or, F-bomb. Uh, what somebody can say the F word. There was yeah. lots of <laughs> blood. There was, there more there blood. was lots of there violence. Fuck, that's what we needed. <laughs> there was lots of violence, but there was surprisingly very little blood. So I think maybe they're just gonna add in some splashes of blood and call it rated R. I don't know that it's gonna make it a good movie. And this is Netflix. Why did you not just release the cut of the movie you wanted? Mm. Right. Why are yeah. you from wh- the get go? From the get go. They obviously reach a point of like no return. Yes. And I think this is a hey, our movie's probably not very good. We filmed it in two parts. Let's kind of cut some stuff out and we'll release this three or four times and we might get some good views. And oh, it's... Rotten Tomatoes, not good. Metacritic, not good. And like, I'm not saying don't watch this movie and form your own opinion. Like I said, it's a very beautiful movie. Um, there was some decent action in it. Yeah, I wanted to like it. Like I, again, only first half. Over yeah, here. I wanted to stay up during it, and then I was yeah. like, "There's just nothing <laughs> grabbing me." No, and the whole movie, nothing ever what grabs do you, you. What do you rate it? Uh, I'm gonna give this like a 1.5. Ouch! Ooh, Ooh, that's yeah. the roughest score in a while. I, I could was probably. It, it might have been better on mute. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> was it doomed from the moment that like Star Wars was like you're out? Um, because then you just have to change everything. Well, to be you're, like, com- not so you're Star- comparing not s- everything to Star Wars, and it's just you're like, man, this is like trying to be Star Wars, and it's not quite there. Ouch! All right, yeah. And will you watch the sequel? Of course. Yeah, because <laughs> you're in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cool. uh, one point five. Not that is, I need to well, know what happens, but I mean, guess it, what? You did for us what we do for everybody who listens to this podcast. You don't have to watch it. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to watch. Now it. you know, and now we don't have to watch the second one, but he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah you definitely earn. We can cut our losses. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to start any of them. <laughs> All right, Scotty, we'll come back to you for uh, some more stuff. Uh, Giggler, let's go to you and talk about your cycling at your house. Yes. All right. So uh, about a month ago, I found out that Peloton um, started to have entertainment apps on their uh, bikes. So as a true degenerate that I am, I was like, all right, I'm just going to watch stuff while I that's how I'm going to work out because I haven't used it in a couple of years. Degenerates <laughs> don't work out. I Yeah, you're true. You're right. But um, so like, how's that work? Peloton's like there's a Disney Plus app on the screen now. HBO Max, Disney Plus. Um, Watch your movie. I don't ride your bike. How- Netflix. What was on it before? I, you just I mean, road a road. You could, yeah, you could you could watch a road. A lady could, yelling at you, or you could watch people that were biking and then telling you what to do. Oh. Um, or like you're like in a city. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I feel yeah. like this was a no brainer. Let's yeah. put yeah. some a- actual entertainment on this yeah. bike. I would have just used an iPad the entire time if I had. One I before. well, there, well, here's the thing. If you're listening at home and you're like, I can't afford a Peloton. I'm not even paying for Disney Plus. Hook your iPad up to your inside bicycle and like you can do this. Yeah, yeah. It's, the same. Pel- it's the same. Not an uh, not a supporter of the podcast. <laughs> right. Not. And they never you will. do not need uh, a Peloton. Well, I'm sorry, but hey, listen, every I'm, this is the everybody's podcast. Not everybody can get a Peloton, but everybody can like can maybe get like even what's the most simple bicycle like out there that you could have at your house? It's like a stationary. You know what? Put it They're in your actually, living room. Flip oh. on the TV. <laughs> Drive around St. Louis City for a while, just through the alleys. You might even see one in an alley somewhere. Just go outside, grab a lime bike, 
There you go. <laughs> and Put it for on some, grab some an old line And for the right deal, I will absolutely convince people on this podcast to go to Peloton. For the oh, right deal. Let's go Peloton. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. We'll have I'm Peloton. Ta- we're talking about Peloton, Disney, and Marvel. We love Pelotons right. on yeah. this podcast. What are you talking about? All right, so it's Giggler, how's it, how's it going, Giggler? So, yeah, well, first day, I just I couldn't figure out what to turn on. So whenever that happens, I just go to Disney Plus and go to the Marvel section and find something. Same. So I just decided I'm going to do a whole rewatch. And then I, in the middle of it, I was like, all right feeling like a real Iron Man right now. I'm just going to see if I can do this whole thing, but watch the entire MCU 33 movies on, while I sit on this bike, no matter how long it takes you, me. We're using it, though, right? So Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. I should clarify. I am. I get about six miles in 30 minutes. So I got wow. five, five movies down, 22 rides in 26 days, uh, about 130 miles, and I uh, start Avengers tomorrow. And how so many, 130 how many... miles you've watched – Phase one about. Basically, yes. I can't wait. Wow, congrats. Are you nice. going to pepper in the shows? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Are, are you down I'm, anyway? I'm a ma- uh, Let's get to the real no, question. It's, it's the birthday week, so that's really uh, kind of yeah. counteracting. But you're, but there's a balance now. But yeah, yeah it's, for it's sure. You're not about, fatter. Yeah, that's I'm just great. getting in a routine. Like, I'm adding new things every week. Like, I started doing yoga every day. At, like mostly like right after I do it. It's kind of yes. like stretching to get You ready. watch Star Wars while you do that? Yeah. No. Can you no, actually film that? No, I would no. love to see that. <laughs> sure, I will. I'll, 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 I mean, follow along on Twitter because I've been tweeting yeah. like every few days because I'm X, just trying to keep myself X, accountable. Yeah. If, if that, Yes, thank you. If I stop, uh, call me out on, on X and tell me that I'm a fat piece of shit that isn't that should be riding the bike. Yeah, I mean, we oh, yeah, we oh, love the trolls love will that. motivate you yeah, to yeah. to do better. Well, I'm proud of you, man, and That's you're yes. and, and I mean, good on Pel- Peloton for thinking of something like that. But like, yeah, like put on a movie and right. just ride your bike. Yeah, I love this. it. That is, I love it. Yeah, it's a great you know what they need to team up with the thing that you did, uh, with the medals. Oh yeah, for sure. Like oh, they need I to be sending. Yeah, they send, need to be sending you miles. Some, you some right. medals. Have you please. taken a pre like a pre photo? No, I should. You should before and after. Before and after. We'll do it. Body built by Marvel. Take like your shirt. What you've been saying. There's, there take your right shirt there. off, Andy. The free free photos right there. Free... <laughs> you should take s- send them a picture of what Scotty gets for his running yeah. stuff with his cool like uh like nerdy yeah. medals. Yes. Dot fit. That was my. Yes. Dot fit. My, is there you. another app that you guys are building right now? Like, is this happening organically? Yeah. Have you just figured out a new Peloton app? Yeah. Maybe, Pick, maybe. Watch shows. Earn medals. Scott was my MCU inspir- medals. Was my inspiration. So Do you think people are you, watching us right now while they're working out? Like wow, maybe. absolutely, it's getting very meta. Hey, oh my, it is you very meta. It's like this. you can do this. You're riding. Go. Push Pump. it. Push yeah. it. <laughs> Andy, keep going. <laughs> Stay hydrated, man. Watch movies. We always believed in you. You can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Except for you, Carl. This is <laughs> yeah. terrible. Oh, weather. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Resting, no. What's wrong with you? Oh, resting. Cut. cut. No. Cause. What is? Am I gonna have to cut that? Yeah, cut no. That yeah, out. right. That's definitely staying in. I don't know. Carl's taking came, a came rest. Up. All right, okay. let's let's move on. Sam the sleeper, tell us about Band of Brothers, guys. Uh, back in the archives, two thousand one. Come back with me. HBO series about World War Two. You're following Captain Winters, Damian Lewis playing Captain Winters, Ron Livingston as uh, probably a Captain too. Uh, yeah. Nixon. You got. <laughs> I mean, there are so many people. I got to read them. So many actors today that we don't even, you know, you're like, oh, that's a big actor. Well, they're in Band of Brothers in 2001. You got uh, Neil McDonough, which you probably don't know. David Schwimmer. Yep. He's wow. back in it. Donnie Wahlberg, probably one of his biggest successes because wow. I don't know if he did much after that, really. Small Parts by Jimmy Fallon. Tom Jimmy Hardy. Fallon. Tom Hardy's in it. Are Tom you talking? Hardy. So Band of Brothers was in 2001. Yeah. And this is what. And this is. These, these are, are people in that. Show. In that show. Ten part. Not show. just from 2001. No, they are. In they're the, in the show. And in the show, which that is was in 2000. They are. Right. They are characters in Band of Brothers. All right. Michael Fassbender. Amazing. Oh, oh, Magneto. Magneto. How many people am I from comic movies? Am I naming right now? This was basically a hotbed. Of Marvel DC movies, I think. Amazing. Uh, so it follows those gentlemen. They're part of Easy Company, 101st Division, Airborne Division. Uh, follows Easy Company through boot camp uh, and all through uh, World War II. So they are paratroopers, and the, it just follows them. Their story, you know, different uh, operation market, uh, if I got that right. So all these different operations that they were part of during World War II. It is, If has anyone... Anyone seen it? Never saw it. My dad loved it, and he had it on DVD. I, I think it's on Netflix now. 
Wow. Okay. Mm, yeah. I'm it, check that oh out. my God. It, so the, it starts it, a little it, slow. It help, and, camp. help us out. Band of Brothers had 10 episodes. 10, you 10 said. parts. I think it's 10 parts. 10 parts. One 40, season of 45, 50 minutes. Okay. One season of television from 2001. That's Classic it. And it's HBO, on Netflix. Like, Classic HBO. Uh, wow. All right. And it is based on true facts. Captain Winters is a real person. It's true Nixon's stories. A, yeah. Oh, Nixon's shoot. a real guy. The It is, I think it goes like Band of Brothers for me and then- the brutality and the realism that was um, Saving Private Ryan is right up there with this the show. But this is starts a little slow because you're at boot camp and David Schwimmer's the uh, the guy you know the the boot the sergeant uh, drill drill guy and it is so good. I think I've seen it. I don't know how many hours. It's probably ten hours of material. Uh, I've probably seen it six times. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it's it a is, favorite. It's a favorite. Uh, so what do you rate it? Um, what I rate it three point nine. Wow. Yeah. Uh, four. Ooh. Band of if, Brothers. If I'm Hell watching yeah. it six times, 60 hours of It's Good. Hell Band yeah. Brothers. Check ne- it out. Next up is Carrie, the creator. She's watching 2020 and 48 hours, and that's all. That's it. That's all she watches. <laughs> and for days and days, it's what she has on when she like Ooh. when she works. If I leave the room and if I leave the room and it's like she can do whatever she wants, like it's these shows. All right. Either that or she she paints too. But it's been mostly 2020, which she ran out of. And have you guys ever heard of 48 hours? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This you is guys... like the first 48 kind of like. I don't know. Someone's gone missing. I or, think so. Or murdered. And, and they're have... all like murders or like, kidnappings. We don't and... figure out anything first... in 48 hours. And they're all true stories. It's pretty much a cold case. Yeah, they say the first then it 48 goes to the hours. Other show. And it's been like 20 years of this show, like so many episodes. She says a lot of them are really, 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 really good. And then there's also some bad ones. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a mix. So uh, that's Carrie's. And then some for me, uh, rewatched Game of Thrones probably for like the sixth or seventh time. I need you to talk, do that. A show that gets better and better and better is Game of Thrones, especially the more you remember details and the more you're just like, I actually am along for the ride. You're watching uh, it all the way through? Yeah, we started at the beginning. Uh, we got all the way through, and now we're watching Hot D, House, Hot of, D. House of the Dragon. And man, that's... That's been fun too. It, it it's uh, I'm poking some holes in it as I'm watching it again, especially comparing it to the first sh- series so closely. Yeah. I kind of get like, oh, you're doing that again. You're doing you know, that a lot again. of time jumps in Hot D, and it's it kind of jarring a little bit. And it, sometimes it's hard to say that it's like it's about House of the Dragon, and it's about like the drag the Targaryens are doing very well, and so it's literally about like the House of the Dragon mostly, and it's like family drama. So it it's not as much as like Game of Thrones with like you know six countries going at it. So it's hard. Like sometimes I feel like is this boring? But it's not. The acting is so good, and you Real are good. back on King's Landing. You're back at Dragonstone. Mm-hmm. Like you're at these beautiful places that it's like two hundred years before Daenerys Targaryen was born. Even the thing. Yeah. So and and man, you talk about names. Like it'll take me years of watching this show to get the names. We literally pull out the family tree like while we watch. We hear a name, we just got to look at the family tree and mm. be like, oh, I see where we're yeah. going down to. Really fun. Uh, at night, before I go to bed, if Car- Carrie's going to sleep and I get to watch something, it's either Smallville again, and I've been listening to the Talkville <laughs> podcast and trying Somebody to get- say uh, me. Remy Zero, hell yeah. I might have to play, put that in the episode right now, maybe. This was a uh, nighttime show I watch, Talkville podcast, rewatching the show, Smallville, highly recommend Michael Rosenbaum, Tom Welling from the show. Superman and Lex Luthor are hosting a podcast talking about this show. Uh, you should go listen to it. Um, or the X-Men 90s cartoon, getting ready for X-Men 97, dropping later this summer. It's coming. Back to Scotty Scoop. Tell us about hey. this one. Uh, we got uh, collectors.com, the CLZ comic app. So uh, I've, I've got a rather large comic collection um and your your physical comics my physical comic collection for a while it's just kind of been sitting in the background and i haven't been doing anything with it hey, I, you haven't really given this update on the pod yet no Let's do um it. so i decided uh, a couple weeks ago i was like uh i'm gonna check out the clz app and it's a it's literally to catalog your comics and i went through my entire collection and i scanned every barcode and now I know what I own, and Amazing. I can I can flip through it. I can find what I have. If I'm out shopping, I can see a comic and be like, "Do I have that? Do I need to buy it?" Boom! I check my my collection, and no, I don't have it, and I'll take it. Um, this is a uh, uh, man. It's so good. You can search. It shows you. So this is the app you're using. This is the app. I mean, these are screenshots. You're, you're logging it in. These straight are straight from my phone. We're showing screenshots from the app that you're using to log your stuff. It, it, 
you can sort these by where you put them. Like if you put them in a certain box, you label the box and it's on your shelf. We're talking to comic book collectors right now. You can sort them by the name of the comic, uh, whether it's DC or Marvel, the writer, the cover artist, the colorist, the editor. Does the app help you out once it like finds the issue that you're loading yeah. in? Uh, it's it, like all it pre-filled, right? It shows you the cover. That's it, great. It shows you, like it'll have a little gold key right there. The That one right there, Death of Captain America. I had an app like this for all the beers I tried in my first, life once. First yeah. Red Hulk. <laughs> wow, um, this is amazing. Scott, yeah. Oh, for, man. First Red Hulk. And, I've and, got two of them. And we're, two and different covers. On the pod right now, we're just planting this seed for like, Scotty's like onto something with these these comic books. He's got yes. such an epic collection. Yeah. He's such a nerd's nerd. Uh, and now four, we're getting like organized. 4,020. I realized I didn't even know I had that one. You know, it was the uh, first appearance of the, uh, or first mention of the Mandalorians. Um, we got Venom. Are first like, solo Venom. Are, are there like first v- solo Wolverine? Nineteen eighty two. Yeah. Should, I wonder wow. if there should be like you could do like comic book viewing parties where people come and like read your comics and hang out. Yeah, I could do That's that. That's an idea. Yeah, we've also talked about Logan doing. wants to come over and read my comic. Books. I do. I'm just looking for. <laughs> yeah, there you oh, go. And, and we've talked about doing uh, now like Sky Scoops comic book corner or something. Yes, and we're, uh, like definitely some more bonus episodes. You know, more I'm gonna content. maybe every time we have an episode, I'll just pull out a classic book and tell you uh, what it's all about. That's really good. I want to hear about books that you're reading. I want to hear about storylines that are like epic to help people like put the pieces together, like For sure. series that stick out to you. Um, this is Stay awesome. Tuned. And the app is called CLZ. Very cool. It's great. Great app. Thank you, guys. Thank you, CLZ. Future sponsor. Yes. Sam the Sleeper, tell us oh. about every Toy Story. <laughs> I don't know if I can cover them in time. Well, no, you don't well, have to cover them. You've got a friend this, in us. Just thank tell you. us. Uh, this is starting to become a theme. It's like, what is Ari watching at my house? Which is what I'm should, watching. Yeah, should yes. we just have him on? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's starting to be able to talk quite well. Uh, yeah, so every day uh, we come home, uh, we pick him up, and he just wants to watch uh, Buzz, big Buzz guy. Uh, what about Blippy? Blippy's just it's dead. all Buzz these days. <laughs> really, that and Rapunzel. Blippi. Oh my god, got a thing for the ladies. You know what it is? This is like if this was Toy Story, like the movie. Blippy would be like up on the walls, oh. and then it'd be changing over to <laughs> Blippi's Buzz Lightyear. Di- Buzz Lightyear. Blippy's got dust on him right now. <laughs> oh, Blippi's no. got is a dusty little boy. Uh, Broken string. <laughs> you know, I think at this point, uh, most of us know Toy Story. There's four <sighs> of them. Yeah. Uh, one day, we literally watched all four. It was like a Saturday, just a lazy Saturday. Watched one, two, three, and four, I think, before Missy even got up. Wow. wow. Uh, good day. Yeah, it's good. I was up early. She got up late. And, uh, you know, it follows uh, Andy and his toys that uh, come to life when he's not in the room. And uh, they want nothing more than just to be played with. Uh, and it follows different adventures. Uh, that these toys go through in uh, in the life of uh, sentient of toys, toy. uh, toys that are alive. It's like Pixar is like one of their top ten bust out films. Absolutely, like, this was like set. This put them on the map. And uh, Tim sure. Allen, uh, yeah, uh, Tom, Hanks. Tom, Hanks. Tom Hanks. Like my gosh, yeah. I, it's, there and there's more. Even you watch it, and there's like, oh my god, that's Bob. I I can't even name the I names. Know all the I cast. knew their faces, but uh, it's so freaking. They're enjoyable, and I, I haven't seen them since I was little. But now I'm watching them every day, and I'm like, I don't even know if like there's a bad one. Like yeah. I don't even know all no. four. Were, oh no, were, they're all. I know like, you're I watching glasses. it. You're watching that first one, and like the soldiers are coming down the stairs with like the baby monitor, yeah. and you're like, yeah. I was a little kid watching this. Yeah, yeah. and Scotty and Scotty was like 45. <laughs> I was already an adult, <laughs> and, and then and then you Scotty skip, had two kids. By you the... skip to like <laughs> the, the season. This the season. The uh, the. The uh, movie where they're he's the going off three. to college, oh. and the soldiers bringing up the bringing up the soldiers, they're out the window. They're going out the window with their parachutes, and they're like, "We know, our soldiers are the first to go <laughs> to the trash." And they all hop out the line window. up. He's like, "Line up, soldiers!" <laughs> yeah, we're the first to go in the trash, and they all jump out the window with their parachutes. Sid, so, the neighbor that just oh. murdered Sid. Toys. Fun fact: I mean, I told my wife this. I go, "Do you know Sid?" Later on in the movie, is no longer just like Andy, who's going to college. Do you know? The trash man? In it's the, him. That's Sid. <gasps> of, they're good at that. They always do the Easter eggs. Yeah. Sid is cool. the ends up being the garbage guy picking up the trash. He's I got thought, the same skull t shirt on. I was hoping he'd end up a pizza planet. That's what um, I thought originally. I'm like, maybe it was a pizza. I'm like, no, it was the trash. Uh so, man, Toy Story Toy Story Three just bringing that like ex ex existential crisis of like these toys, spoiler alert, are about to maybe die. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Or, seen, or put or, into just forever. Storage, storage, 
So it is good, you know. It, it it's good, clean fun. And it's it, it's fun to see the movies too. The the uh, the graphics and the storyline just progress, and they do great jobs of tying old characters in, like Squeaky or whatever his name is. He's a little squeaky uh, penguin, and then like two two. Uh, I keep saying seasons. I've watched them so many times. Yeah, it feels like a season <laughs> of TV. Like a season of TV. But, uh, uh, he's up on the shelf, Dusty. Does like Blippi. Uh, has has he seen the Buzz Lightyear movie? He has. Seen, Have you seen? Yeah. Bu- yeah, yeah. He has seen Buzz Lightyear. By Buzz Lightyear, I think he's partial to that. Uh, the voice, uh, oh, the Tim not Chris Allen. Evans so much. Yeah, but Tim Allen. And what What do you on, think? I mean, that's good. What do you think of Buzz Lightyear? The movie? Yeah, it, it, it was good. It was. It was not as good as I thought. But it's it'd not be. in no, rotation. No, it's not in rotation. It It was uh, good in the fact that I'm glad it was made. I think it's. I like that meta, like the movie that the toy was based off. In the movie, I just wish movie. I just wish it would have been a better movie. Right. Yeah, just in general, a better movie. It looked good. It just was kind of like okay. This, yeah, just didn't. I I wanted more buzz. Yeah, like true buzz. Now you show me. Like, now you bring the Woody movie up. I'm in. I, I want Old we'll West. See, yeah, let's get some spinoffs. Who are we gonna get? Not typically my let's genre. Thing, Maybe but... the pig. Give me the pig. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Potato, Mr. Potato Head movie. You, you get like uh, uh, Colin Hanks to do it instead of. <laughs> Tom Hanks. <laughs> uh, also in Band of Brothers. Oh. I had. Colin, Colin Hanks. Colin Hanks? Yeah. Really? He's great. Yeah, what was he, like four? Wow. He was. All right. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> Let's talk about sports. Sports. The Super sports. Bowl, February 11th. Andy, tell us about the sports. All right. Well, if you're not doing anything, first off, February 11th, you should just go to the Cycle, cycle Showcase instead. Dude, humble plug there for Randy <laughs> Nolge from the pageant it's... at Cycle Showcase, cycle February showcase. 10th and 11th. If you're hearing this and Can't you want to see a cool motorcycle art show at the Moto Museum in St. Louis, uh, listen to our la- latest episode before this one, actually. Because we talked to Randy all about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if you're not doing that, and actually, timing-wise, on Sunday, the show is from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah. If I know the Super Bowl, I and mean, we're talking like 4 or 5 p.m. start Five, time, right? 5.30, 5.15, yeah, 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 usually. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. We got Chiefs, Niners, again. It's 2020 all over again. 2020 was an election year. Trump versus Biden. And, and the year 20, of COVID. It's COVID. I think and, you and, forgot. And, a... and, what? <laughs> COVID? Okay, I, don't, I would just. just it's just no, funny how I'm you remember 2020. Yeah, comparing Trump and Biden <laughs> politics. He's like, God, remember Trump? <laughs> I'm comparing the things that were the same in 2020 versus 2024. I'm hope that the that's not one of the uh, similarities, please. Gotcha. Uh, another another matchup of the Chiefs Niners. Uh, Chiefs took it last time. I I don't even know who I want to win. Really, what what are you guys? Uh, I'll root for uh, Chiefs just because I think it'll have a significant a better impact financially around our area. Yeah, I hate the 49ers. So there you go. Not a big Chiefs fan. I, I, I'm indifferent, but I'm, I don't like the 49ers. I'm rooting for Taylor Swift, everyone. Well, and obviously oh, now oh, with Taylor yes. Swift the involved, third option. <laughs> now this is going to be this will be like I mean they're they're saying it's going to be like five times as many people that watch are watching. Oh, now. for sure. And I believe she won't it. even be there. I thought. But no, she's going to make. No, it. she will be. There. She'll make it. Oh, okay. She'll she's got a show in like in China, Australia, or Japan, China, or, or we'll just name country. I think it might be Japan. Yeah, I think it's China. I don't know. Japan, she's Australia a lot of shows on in China, somewhere yeah. many um, hours away. All right, that'll yeah. be huge. That'll be good. The, the commercials are looking crazy. Like I feel like you know that's why I'm showing up. You know, I'm the uh, commercial guy, and I'm showing them early. Now. And, I, and I'm telling you, there's yeah. a, there's a dialogue out there where it's like, hey, listen, there is the crowd that doesn't care about the game. That we got to do big commercials, and it seems like that is up this year. Like yeah. the the promos for leading up to the big day have been really big. There's like Arnold Schwarzenegger's doing something with State Farm. I've seen uh, DoorDash is doing a crazy giveaway where you can win every pro- every single product that is advertised during the Super Bowl. You can win every single one of them from DoorDash. Holy hmm. cow! You can enter at like DoorDash.com, I'm sure, or just order food from there. But you can definitely get it somewhere. I don't know. Some somebody's got it. It'd be crazy. Well. Wow! Any predictions? We, we mow predictions, your lawn yeah. There, let's make some. Let's make. <laughs> go, let's lay down our, go our Niners, I guess. But I, you're rooting for Niners. Usher, Usher's going to put on a great halftime performance. That's my first prediction, and we will see a Deadpool trailer. Oh yeah, Deadpool three trailer. I don't think we get a trailer. I think we get a teaser. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I, I don't even want. To, I don't want twenty five. A trailer seconds. would cost like a billion dollars. Yeah. Well, and I think they time. just yeah. finished <laughs> filming like two minute trailer a couple <laughs> weeks ago. And the movie Deadpool's coming out July. July. Yeah. Woo. Oh, is it July? Yeah. I hope it's the only my... thing we're going to get this year. So you're going 49ers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I can't root for Casey. I'll say I'll say the Chiefs are winning. I struggle as well. All right, uh Sam Sleeper last one before Salt we take burn. a break. Tell us about Saltburn. Who's seen it? <laughs> no I've been one. purposely avoiding this movie. Man, this was a weird one. Uh so this is Where do like... you watch it? 
This is on Amazon, I think. Prime Video. Oh, Apple I think I TV? It. I think I watched it on Netflix. Mm. It's Prime, I think. I'm pretty oh, sure it? it's Prime. It's Prime. Wow. Either way, hmm. okay. Not the important part, guys. This is <laughs> just Google Saltburn. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's a psychological thriller. I want to say dark comedy pieces. It's black comedy. It is so dark. Um, the pieces that are comedic. Psychological thriller. It follows um, the interesting looking actor, Barry Keoghan. You guys familiar with him? Yep. Yes. He is Oliver. The Joker, Qu- right? <laughs> he, yep. He is Oliver Quick. Uh, he goes, he's a quiet, unassuming, kind of mysterious character. He's a student at Oxford. He's got trouble fitting in. Uh, he somehow unseemingly befriends this character, Felix, played by uh, the guy from Euphoria, Jacob Elordi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting character. Uh, so Felix is this like uh, very affluent, uh, comes from an eccentric family, uh, just a rich guy at Oxford, and he befriends this guy. They end up, um, he invites him, Felix invites Oliver to their family estate called Saltburn, over the summer, and Oliver just lives with this with this gentleman and his family and his two friends that, or his friend that lives there as well at this massive, multi million dollar estate outside Oxford, and um, very eccentric family, very uncomfortable feeling to watch it. It's just there's just a lot of uncomfortable scenes in in. Uh, I'm sure you've seen. Midsummer tweets and or X's of <laughs> of people Zeets. talk. Yeah, there's now they're making cocktails uh, shots. I've ke- I've stayed away from all... it. It's been on the it's been on the almost play a few times. There's it's very strange. Uh, Oliver or uh, Barry does a great job playing this weird, really weird character. Uh, and I won't spoil it, but uh, Quick, Oliver Quick, and Felix and the whole family. No one is really who they seem, and I won't say who is because I don't want to spoil it. There's just something deeper going on, and it is just this weird. It's a psychological thriller, so nice. know that going in. It's really you kind of don't know where it's going at different times. Good. But it all comes in the in the end. It is the probably one of the most uncomfortable movies I've watched in some time, uh, and one of the most different movies that's come out. In, in and I think that's why it's getting all this buzz, good or bad. It's just weird. It's a yeah. weird movie, um, a little slow. So the Sammy the Sleeper would give it a snore rating of like three, three point two, uh, but I give it a score like three point four eight out of originality. I just haven't seen a movie like this out there. Wow, still Not, a high score. High score, just for the uh, and I might look back on this in a year and be like that was way too high, because right now it's just a movie I couldn't say. Oh, that was a lot like this. It's just very different. Great review, fair Thank share, you. salt yeah. burn. Uh, either on Prime or Netflix or somewhere. It's on one of those streaming yeah. platforms. Oh, you can get yeah, one of those internet streaming platforms. Yeah, Skinamax. Yeah, one still... of the one of the channels. <laughs> one of the cha- one, one of the, of the 18, streaming channels. One of the eighteen things I pay for. That's the price of cable these days. Yeah, uh, poor grandparents everywhere. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? <laughs> what do you mean you bought HBO? I, know, I just want to watch TV. What's a My what's Netflix. an HBO app? <laughs> I just want to watch the talkies, see? All right, then I'll, I'll leave us with this for what you share before we take a break. Two things on Peacock, rewatching Parks and Rec for like the fifth time. It's hilarious. It'll never get old. It's so great seeing Andy Dwyer, Star-Lord, just in the early days, and it's hilarious. And then also they've released on Peacock uh, the Office Superfan episodes for every season with extended cut more scenes. So like all the episodes on The Office right now on Peacock are like 40 minutes. Wow. Oh. And it's, I mean, right. I mean, it's, and you know what they did? They put in all the bad, un, the bad stuff. The cut yeah. stuff. Like, you'll watch, I watch it and I'm like, that's weird. I see why you left that yeah, out. Yep, yep. All right, let's take a break and then travel back to 2004. Vampires, Daywalkers, the war continues in Blade <laughs> Trinity. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hold on. We'll be back, Danny. <laughs> Mostly superheroes with the return. Break. Now it's the break. After the break. Hey podcast listeners, this is Chris Holsey. I'm the host of the new true crime podcast, Small Town Forgotten. In the first season, I focus on a very personal cold case. 31 years ago, my family member, Jimmy Wade Martin, was murdered in front of multiple witnesses in Bonterre, Missouri. A murder weapon was found and a man confessed, and yet there have been no convictions and no justice for Jimmy Wade's twin daughters. You can listen to Small Town Forgotten directly from our website, smalltownforgotten.com, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. The Meat. 
Welcome back from the break. This is Mostly Superheroes. Storytelling features all the time on this podcast, and we're in the Marvel Universe today. A flick that's part of a trilogy, the third, in fact, this 2004 flick is called Blade Trinity, starring Wesley Snipes, Ryan Reynolds, and Jessica Biel. Wow. Back, ag- back again. We watch these things every eight months. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so yep. if you didn't know, Sam's p- question was so great today. He's like, what, can anyone explain to me why we're jumping in at Blade 3? <laughs> the answer is, we have talked about it on this podcast. It's just been a while. you got to go to MostlySuperheroes.com forward slash Miss Marvel. That's M-I-S-M-A-R-V-E-L. I actually forgot the C on that. But if you go to MostlySuperheroes.com, do our categories, there's a category called Miscellaneous Marvel. Because tell me if you guys agree, these Blade movies are still kind of in the what are these? Yeah, they're, they're even, just mo- yeah. even from each other. Each Blade, oh my gosh, is kind of like you know what we're gonna go this direction, and yeah. they're like you know what Blade Three's coming out, we're changing it up. Yes, <laughs> it's not the same as what's happening kind of in the MCU nowadays in a present day 2024, where like the X Men movies are kind of becoming like another multiverse mm-hmm. with the Spider Man crossovers. It's kind of like all right, the Tobey Maguire stuff, the Andrew Garfield stuff. That's all Marvel now. Blade movies, I think, are still kind of on their own little island. They haven't been I've, fully adopted yet. But there's a new Blade yeah. movie in the works starring, someone help me out. Last name, uh, Ali. Mahershala Ali. And, I mean, this is the, I mean, I would. It was yeah. supposed to come out already. And, oh, man, many times. Yes. It's been delayed, delayed, redone. You know, oh, we're redoing the movie. I think it was 2019, right? Oh, wow. When they cast Mahershala Ali. And then COVID happened. Say that first name again, because I need to learn this one. Mahershala. Mahershala. Mahershala Ali. And I mean, you know, I love him. Did he take inspiration from Wesley Snipes? Did they meet and talk ever? I wonder. I these know. these are going to be the behind the scenes Marvel things I want to know. But today we're in the time machine. We're going back, and I want to talk about who made it. Big thanks to IMDb and Wikipedia for helping us out today. A little bit of the nerdy stuff that you want to know about this film. It did come out in 2004. It's an American superhero film written and directed by David S. Goyer, who also wrote the screenplays to Blade and Blade 2. Again, if you haven't, check out our episodes. We fully reviewed both of the movies at MostlySuperheroes.com. And from Wikipedia, Marvel Comics character of the name Blade. This was produced with Goyer, Peter, Peter Frankfurt, Lynn Harris, supporting cast of Ryan Reynolds, Jessica Biel, Chris Christopherson, Whistler coming back, Dominic Purcell, holy cow, Prison, Prison break. break, yes, Parker Posey, not Elizabeth Banks, <laughs> not Elizabeth Banks, <laughs> not Elizabeth, AKA not Elizabeth Banks, and Andy, you like this, Triple H. My favorite. Is was this his de- debut? Acting yes. debut, other than oh. the times that he just acts. On, on in the ring every day. Right. As a not diehard wrestling fan, I when he came on the screen, I go, "Oh, Triple H." Yep. yep. Like he he is, like you just know it's him. He looks yeah. he, that ponytail. He's a staple. Uh, based on Blade by Marv Wolfman, Gene Colan, uh, produced by Peter Frankfurt, Wesley Snipes, of course, a producer on the film. David S. Goyer, Lynn Harris. I mean, you know, here's starring this cast. I feel like this was probably a fight with Wesley. How about he was like, "Are you? What do you mean? What are all these names?" Wesley Snipes, Chris Christopherson, Jessica Biel, Ryan Reynolds, Parker Posey, Natasha Leon. Leon yeah, yeah, which she's in all sorts of stuff. Now. She, now. Then. American Pie. Yeah. Then you were like, who is this spine chick? She has that one movie. You, know you, you watched that TV show yeah, she's in. Poker Face. Poker, poker Face. face. Really Orange is yeah. New Black. Yeah. She's um, actually was blind. one on Netflix where she died over and over again. Like yes. Groundhog Day. Well, that was Russian, really good. No, maybe I'm making that name Russian up. Russian Doll. Russian Doll? I think that was it. I feel like that's it. Yeah. Uh, the music on this, bring it back. The RZA and Ramen Dwaji. Wu Tang, Killer Bees. Really? Wu Tang. Look at the this. RZA. You're, inter- this you're educating me right I now. I love the RZA. Production companies, New Line Cinema. Cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Production companies, New Line Cinema, Marvel Enterprises, Amen Raw Films, Imaginary Forces, Sean Danielle Productions Limited. So a real team up for sure. Uh, distributed by New Line Cinema, released on December eighth, two thousand four, Christmas time. Man. Oh my gosh! Mm. Running time eleven uh, one hundred and thirteen minutes. Uh, the budget of this movie was sixty five million dollars. That's a big budget movie in two thousand four. You I ready for like. this box office? Yeah, that's more than the previous two, maybe. Yeah. Box office one hundred and thirty two million dollars. Doubled it. Wow. It's a win. Still yeah. did less than the other two though. I don't have those handy, but you can listen to our episodes and get them. 131 million. I feel like you just listened to them. I did. 
Uh, a little setup for the film, the third and final installment in the Blade trilogy. Or is it? Right. Or <laughs> is it? The war between humans and vampires continues. You know, the setup has yes. been there from the beginning. Vampires versus humans, a team up of kind of a mix in the two. Three, the war is escalating. Blade has been framed for numerous murders by the vampire leader, Danica Talos, who is determined to lead her bloodthirsty compatriots to victory. Blade must team up with a band of rogue vampire hunters to save humanity from his most challenging enemy yet, Dracula. The meat. <laughs> no, I want to do like. Can I click some then? Oh, here, this is the one I wanted to do. <laughs> Dracula! <laughs> Dracula! AKA Drake. 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 <laughs> Dominic yeah. Purcell. Here we go. Dracula, vampire. Most famous vampire ever. Of you course. put this in a Blade movie with Wesley Snipes. You got the two most famous vampires yes. ever. This is going to be the best movie anyone's ever seen. It's going to blow your mind. Holy cow. Let's go do round table. Anybody diehard fans of this trilogy? Was this a rewatch for everybody? Scotty Scoop, talk oh, us through it. Rewatch for sure. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this movie and the Blade movies. Um, just great classic. Wesley Snipes, 90s style action. Your daughter, Lila, and you have watched the yes, first two. We did, no, we watched them all. And you watched this one, too. Oh, yes, for, for sure. Okay, well, we'll save that rating for the end. Sam the Sleeper, was this a first time or rewatch? This was a second time for me. I've seen one and two. I think I'm partial. I really enjoyed two. I like Guillermo. I like one, I think. but One's good. It's classic. But yeah. I really love when they started two did have doing Ron Perlman. splitting up. Their face, the the structure and the the yeah. anatomy of the vampires changed. Obviously, that happened in three. It did. If you remember, <laughs> mostly to that dog. If you remember the yeah. first episode, uh, you'll remember me and Andy weren't allowed to watch this as kids. So, even, yes. and the third one came out in two thousand four. I mean, I was I most that one. I was, I was fifteen. You were, you were probably what nine I was, when the first one came out. Yeah, I was like nine. Eight I was or nine, nine, and, and the, I. Probably watched it. And I was 15 when this came out, you know, sophomore in high school, like starting to find my own, but still like, you know, my mom doesn't want me to watch that. You're like, I'm going to have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll have a podcast where I can just finally watch this and talk about it. Uh, so Giggler, probably a first time yeah. rewatch since you were a kid. Definitely. I probably watched this. This is probably a blockbuster pickup back in the day. Oh, yeah. For sure on a Friday night. But um, this time I had to rent it on Apple TV for four bucks. Um, it was worth a little bit more than that four bucks to me, but I, I, I enjoyed the rewatch for sure. Very nice, and uh, Andy watched it yesterday. The rest of us are coming off fresh. I want to do story time and retell this thing. We're having a lot of help from Wikipedia. Let's just get right into it. Opening scene from this thing, Ryan Reynolds with a voiceover, a yes. little monologue narrative, literally just showing us, like, this is how I'm going to do Deadpool. Like, this is how I'm going <laughs> to break the fourth was, wall in this movie immediately. Like, this Ryan was Reynolds. Oh, my God. Just a great. For sure. Dracula's not like what you think in the movies. Or whatever he yeah, says. Yeah. yeah, he's like my wife. Literally goes. I thought you were watching Blade. Like she was just listening. She thought it was like Deadpool She's the like, prequel. Are you watching something else? And I was like, No, it's just Blade. It's Trinity. It's Blade. The highlight of the movie, by the way. I mean, for me, Ryan oh, Reynolds. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my, my god. god. Okay, mine's Triple H. Uh, all right, so the, the movie does open up, Ryan Reynolds' little monologue. A small group of vampires investigate an ancient tomb in the Syrian desert, which they believe belongs to the first vampire, Dracula, also called Drake. Drake. I like how Dracula just gets like this sexy new name. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> he does look like a Drake, though. He does. When they Dominic sure Purcell. That. Oh, my God. He put Prison Break. Yeah. Prison Break. He's also like the Ice Legend, Legends, Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Captain Cold. Captain Cold. I thought yes. he was so great in that. But you yes. see those camoed. Or no, he wasn't Captain Cold. Yes, he, he was oh, the fire guy. He was fire. Yeah. Captain Fire. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Legends of Tomorrow. Sergeant Fire. Show. I don't know. <laughs> He was friends of Captain Cold, yes, also Captain his Cole brother from Prison his... Break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I love in the beginning of this movie, though, you're like, oh, who are these commando, camoed commandos? And, and then you're like, I don't yeah, know who these are. But up. then the first thing you see is up to the sun. They just flick the sun off. And yeah. I'm like, it's, okay. it's vampires. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, so I'm like, I couldn't remember. It, it's a really good, I read like the comments on IMDb and like somebody was trashing it from the get-go. They're like, the opening scene, they're like, they taught us in Blade 1 that vampires have excellent night vision. And these vampires are very clearly using flashlight sticks to see everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, good point. I was wow. like, man, this person's a deep. These people are like mad. Yeah, that's pretty good. But though. I mean, they go up the they go up the stairs Maybe from Ace Ventura. Kind of blinding. They went up the stairs from Ace Ventura uh, <laughs> two. You guys remember where he did the slinky? <laughs> yeah. So these vampires like head up this pyramid. They go in. They're looking for Drake. 
uh, and they're they're there with. Yeah. Uh, they're looking for Drake. They're, they're looking for the Dracula. Scanners, they're right? They got the scanners, oh, they and they find him. See something? They down find here. him. They find a body. He comes up, and he, of course, kills like yeah, one of them right away. Reaches up out you, of the sand. If you're looking at it, watching the movie from the first time, you're like, "Well, they're all dead." Yeah, that's exactly yeah. how it plays in the movie. They're all dead. And this is what I'm going. Holy shit, Elizabeth Banks. This it's, is pretty. Legit. She died five seconds into the movie. <laughs> yeah, and no, she didn't. I know. Nope. She's not even in the movie. <laughs> Parker Posey. Oh my god, they are the they are twins. They are. They are twins. Um, all right, to keep Blade from interfering with this plan of just, like, finding Dracula, that's, like, all we know in the beginning, they frame him for the murder of a human familiar. So this is the opening. This Which is right, he probably did. They didn't is, need to frame him. This is so hilarious. This is right after Blade. Here he is. They've, like, blown up. Like, he's at some place that, like, blows up. and all A of warehouse sudden, explodes. Exactly. And, like, the vampires are just, like, attacking him. Yeah. And they drew him out. Right? And, like, they get him in the street. He's shooting behind his back. He's shooting behind his back. He's oh, got he's the sword. Got the, the, oh, the knife. Here we the go. The whip knife. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, scorpion. Knife. He's like, come here. Mm, just, like, stab you. He and just got the other done guy's far playing. away. He's like, I don't care that you're far away. Watch yeah. this. Whoop. He just got done playing Mortal Kombat. Whoop. And he's running. He's just running. It's him in the jacket. It's like, I'm Blade. I'm still doing this. He kills a vampire in the street. And they go. He goes, why aren't you... Why aren't you Ash right now? Because he hit him with his sling uh, yeah. silver blade. Yeah. And the guy goes, why aren't you smarter? <laughs> got him. And he goes, and he like points behind him. Yeah, I was like, Blade's got got right now. <laughs> and he goes, look over there. And he looks behind him. And it's just one guy with a video camera up on his yeah. shoulder. And he's like. <laughs> See, and, got and Blade goes, "Yeah, damn. Damn. <laughs> this guy's blade's better than mine. <laughs> Um, and they got him. Like, you killed yeah. a person in the street, and it yeah. becomes, like, public knowledge. And so, like, the FBI are, like, now trying to find Blade's Hunting hideout him. to to hunt him down. Yeah. And they do. Murders. We got him for murder. We got him. We finally got him. And, like, what's the public, like, opinion right now? Like, right? Vampires aren't really real. This guy's yeah. just killing. No, yeah. this, this guy's guy a psycho. A murdering street psycho. Let's go get him. Vigilantes and, never go well over in the public in movies. Yeah. Um, a pleasant surprise, Chris Christopherson. Again, they brought him back. He dies and they every get movie. Rid of him again. And then they bring him back. Chris and they bring him back. We're going to kill Chris him. We're going to bring him Whistler, back. the white haired, long yeah. old oh, man. Oh, yes, yes, yes. His, he's like, sorry, yes, I got sorry. old on you, Blade. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. I got old on you. Yeah. Whistler, we Could have look up my her. ring again. Remember, I was married. What'd you say, Giggler? <laughs> Whistler, we hardly knew her. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to meet Whistler Jr. in this movie. We'll talk about yeah. that. Uh, oh, but yeah. before we get there, the hideout where they are like, this is like their base, right? Whistler and Blade have been at it. They're just doing vampire hunting, but now they're on local news. He's like, you don't understand, Blade. There's a PR uh, campaign against you now. I think we could like reenact yeah. this movie. Me, <laughs> you be Blade. I'll be Whistler. <laughs> can, I be, can I be the, the wow. psychological doctor, Vance? Yes, yes please. please. Oh, my gosh. On the kick drum? Scary. I'll be on Ryan the On the kick drum. drum. What's his name? Makes oh my sense. gosh! What I, is his name? Oh, I just know. He's oh, I'm so Gary. good. He's the ther- he's like the FBI therapist. So before yeah, we get there, they yep, they, they attack the yeah. place. He's yeah. like, "What is it? What you've been worried about?" Yep. And here they come, yeah. and it's a freaking like massacre. Oh yeah, they've got like all kinds of hundred SWAT guys. Yeah. yeah, and they're just like he's just indiscriminately like, I don't care that you're the law. I'm gonna fight you anyway. Yeah, and they kill Shotguns, Whistler. Boom, and they kill oh, Whistler. Yeah. Just they, just get well, shot in the back. Yeah, and then he blows them all up. Yeah, he like crawls over to the computer. It's tapity tap, tap tap. Which what is he scared that they're gonna Beep. learn? I don't know. He goes, no, he goes. It said, uh, it said like, you know, final day protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it like blew up the whole place. And he they, had like a little. It remote. was like they data had, protection like, a gun protocol. On him. He's got yes. something. He's got something in his hand. Mm-hmm. See you guys later. Get, get out. He goes, get out of here, get blade. Get out of here, blade. <laughs> <laughs> and he hits it and it blows up. And they they circle blade outside. Literally only like ten guys. Yeah, yeah. But, like, in a half circle, though. Yeah, yeah. And, and they started to pile up, and Blade is, like, looking at the place, and, like, I was I was feeling this. I was like, man, Whistler's dead. Yeah. Whistler's like, dead. Whistler just, they just got Probably for sure this time. Yeah, right. Yeah, probably. He'll be definitely in Definitely not dead. But and, and he's too defeated. Blade's too defeated. He's like, get me out of here. Yeah. yeah. And they arrest him. He's like, oh, maybe I don't have to slaughter these humans. Yeah, these familiars. Familiars. Uh, this is where we get Blade familiars. in the interrogation room. They lock yeah. him down. They got the arms on him. Yeah, he's uh, totally like arm cuffed and handcuffed. What's and... his name? Is the FBI agent? Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I gotta look at this whole cast. Actually, I have it. I have it pulled up. 
there's there's some really there were some bangers in this movie. There from, are like, casting. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we got to get yeah, some of these yeah. names because there's like some like the guy from uh, he's in so many things. He, he is. He was like in Black Lightning. He's uh, never the main guy, but he's, he's always, always a guy. just a really good character actor. It's Elizabeth Banks. Right, it's always <laughs> John. Michael All right, Higgins. so so we got John, John Michael, Michael Higgins, Higgins, who was the therapist. He's like the psychologist, he's a psycho- James Remar. forensic psychologist. And then he ends up he's like questioning for Blade in the interrogation room. This guy's hilarious. He's but I'm just perfect. waiting for him to just go into I'm Gary with the kick drums. Come come, come. with the kick, come come <laughs> with the kick drum. And he goes he he ends up get, talking to the FBI. This is John Michael Higgins now, Doctor Edgar Vance. He has this serum serum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's just like, hey, here's some like tranquilizer. He goes, yeah, I can it. tranquilize blades for the questioning, and he puts it in him, and immediately it like starts to slow down so much that it's like kind of choppy, and I thought yeah. like my computer was <laughs> like having issues. And he goes, "It was that easy to power you." To-? His like voice gets a slowed mere down. human. Yeah. He's like a mere human, mere and he goes, human. "Look, I'm a familiar," and he has the tattoo, and yeah. it's like, oh, here's the setup. Six you years the, now or something. The snarl. The Wesley Knife snarl. Familiar. And he goes, D- were you very close with your mother? Yeah. And yeah, that w- really hit a nerve. Yeah, from Blade we all, 1. We all know. Yeah, his, when his hot mom lived forever and was trying to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, and then there was sexual tension even then. Yeah. It was like, that. you're my mom. Yeah, it was very awkward. Uh, yeah. All right, so. The, the, you should see Saltburn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, And, yeah, wait. there was another character we were trying to look uh, up, Dexter's too. Dexter's dad. Uh, Dexter's, Dexter's dad. dad, James Remar. James Remar. He's we so looking? good. He's he's in the he's FBI. Right there, yeah. He's the FBI lead guy. Yeah, they, he looks different though. Yeah, and this is hilarious. They get Blade. They're like, "What? You think vampires are real? They're not really buying it." Okay, Blade's powered down. We all know now he's been set up, and it's like the vampires are in on this, and they like they've got Blade like locked down on a police station, not looking good. In through the window. Nope. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> nope. No, nope. please, please. We, we had a scene that they cut away from the oh. interrogation. Oh, yep. to the subway. And it's to the subway. We get a yeah. subway scene. We've got this uh, apparently homeless Paint mother. Paint the picture. A homeless mother walks alone. With her baby. With her, her baby and bags of groceries. Military she looks jacket. like She looks like Mother apparently, Mary. Like, apparently midnight. She's getting these groceries with her baby. And, and she's followed into the subway with the most, by the way, stereotypical bag of groceries yes. I've oh, ever yeah, seen in a movie. The, a bag of lettuce and, and the carrot baguette. tops. Yeah, yeah, just coming out the top. It's like from the commercial. Yeah. You know, she looks very worried. She's looking behind her. She hears the, the giggles and the laughter. And we have get some, what, teenage vampires? Yeah. Yeah, teenage vampires. And it's like, well, look, we got a combo meal. <laughs> you take, give us that. She, not my baby. Not my not baby. My baby. It flies up baby? in the air. The vampire holds her down. You're like, oh yeah. my gosh, it's getting a little graphic. I'm a little uncomfortable. She goes in. Yeah, she went down to the darkest subway entrance I've ever seen in my life, yes. and no one is there at all. No. Yeah, it is complete ghost town. There. It kind of seems like the subways don't even work. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the baby says he, on he it, rips the thing off the baby. He's like, I can't wait to eat this baby. Says and that. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, it says, go ahead. Fuck, this is fuck you. <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, what? What? And then the baby would like peas in his face. It's garlic yeah. mist. Garlic it's mist. garlic mist. Garlic yeah. mist. And oh, yeah. garlic. Air salt garlic. Oh, Insert he, kick. He says it so weird too. It's garlic. It's garlic. And she kicks. And she kicks. And she whips it off. And it's me, Jessica Biel. Yes. Yeah. Seven, seven. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Straight off seven, seven. And boom, kill, kill, knife. Yeah, she's got the, she's the thing in her seven all the thing of a in her boot. I well, I mean, then they've set us up. We don't know who this character is. Yeah, she's we don't know who she is. She's got a boot knife. Yeah. She's got the boot knife. Like, chink. She, she can do it. Like, she kills like three of them with her bow foot. and arrow. She pulls out this weird yeah. like light bow. It like ching yeah. chong ching. Yes, and she can. And I kind of liked how the vampires blow up in this. Yeah, oh yeah, the vampire killing in these movies is always. It's, they top notch. A lot better than the like, Fruit of the Loom guys that were blowing up in the first one. Oh, I kind of like that, though. <laughs> I know. Kind of takes you back to, like, Gumby. Yeah. I don't know. There's something. All right. So the, the vampire familiars have arranged for uh, Blade to be kidnapped. We've learned about Subway Jessica Biel, fighter chick. We're like, who the hell is that? We Yeah. We, we get back to the interrogation. And this is where. And this is where it happens. He's, you know. We couldn't have this scene without the, the Subway scene. The vampires from the first scene come in and like, oh, Blade. He's oh, powered Blade. down. He's powered like, down. You, there was Blade. one call out that I did enjoy, which probably has, has absolutely nothing to do with a future Marvel movie, but I did enjoy it because Dr. Vance goes, this is the end game. 
He did. <laughs> he leaves, he leaves his ear, Blade. This is the end game. And I was like, oh. yeah, For fourteen years. They too knew. Early. Tie it in. <laughs> they knew. Tie it in. They knew. Why not? Yeah, we get Dan- Danica and Triple H. Everybody comes into the room. The uh, uh, Blade. We've got you now. It's a big deal, right? Like do? this is the guy that's been killing all of them for, you know, for he's, years. He's yeah. been tranquilized since they 1998. Feel, yeah. right. They feel comfortable enough to just unlatch him from the uh, restraints. She's like, you're weak, aren't you? Yeah. And you're weak, aren't you? And like they're getting ready to do it. And then smash, smash through the glass. Through the window. Is fire. A burning corpse. Burning, burning vampire coming through. And I mean, I, I was sitting at my desk and I was like watching. I was like, damn, right, this is pretty this is pretty good. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Business just picked up. I was like, yeah, here we go. Enter Ryan Reynolds with a yeah. beard. Oh my a oh. great beard. Maybe so one of the dreamy. only beards. You could do it. You could, I can, I oh, you're doing it, it right now. You, should, you just need to shave it a little bit. You get the little hooks, and he is, I mean, he is, I mean, here he is, like, with guns, like, yeah. just showing you, like, what he's got, the yeah. the little quips. That man can jump through a window. He can jump through windows. He can he can do some of the fighting, and he goes, this is a rescue, and he goes, <laughs> juice, like, juice up, Blade, and he shoves the, yeah. something in his mouth. Yeah. an inhaler. The inhaler, right, because they yeah. invented the new he's inhaler. Yeah, because yeah. remember Whistler said he got some friends. Yeah, that's right. Whistler got, said, this is, new, this, no, is new, this is your new- you got to do the voice. Yeah, I got some friends, Blade. <laughs> and you have this inhaler now, and it can change how you take in your stuff. Your, your serum. Your serum. Your serum, serum <laughs> isn't to have to be me and you in the garage <laughs> with you screaming with the needle anymore. Now ah. it can be just going- you got an inhaler now, Blade. You have asthma. You have asthma, Blade. This ain't no albuterol. Yeah, this isn't albuterol. <laughs> this will power you up. And it does. He can power up. He breaks out. Ryan Reynolds is fighting everybody. He's got the cool gun scene where he like sh- tries to shoot everybody. Yep. Yes. And, I mean, they kind of tell us who they are later, but it's like, who are these people? Like, Ryan Reynolds know. and Jessica what Biel just on? helping out Why Blade. Why is Katniss Everdeen here? And we get a side-by-side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, get a, that's good. we get a side-by-side hallway scene, Blade oh, and classic. Ryan Reynolds, like, just, like, doing this, like, crazy yeah. side-by-side. Yeah. This is fun. You got, yeah. There's, there's bow and arrow fighting, and there's... There was, yeah, there was some. I can't. Cool. I can't shoot around corners. I can. I can. <laughs> yeah, by the way, for me, no, everybody's on, Whistler. Gotta... Zip. <laughs> Whistler. Zip. Everybody. Everybody. I can. I can shoot. <laughs> she, well, she, you're not wrong. Yeah. You're yeah. not wrong. We'll get there, and we can do it. Um, and then they get out. Well, it's the the, the yep. best part. Ahead, yeah. The best part of the scene is Ryan Reynolds is, you know, he's holding people off, and he looks over, and Blade just jumps into the ceiling. Ceiling, yeah. He does in the scene. This though, is supposed to be a rescue. This is, <laughs> where he goes, where the f is he going? Where the f is he going? Yeah. And in this scene, he does say Whistler, and he yells, and that's when Blade's like, "What?" And we're all yeah. like, and we all look, and and Jessica Biel goes, "This way, this yeah. way." And I'm like, "There she, there it is, Whistler Junior." So you know, Whistler Ryan Jr. Reynolds, uh, Hannibal King, and and Abigail, they come running out of the lobby, and they're like, "Oh, well, it's over now. Here come all the cops. What are we gonna do?" And here comes Blade out of like the tenth story window. Oh my Smash! god! And you just see him like jumping down. Uh, uh, Fifty stories. Yeah, <laughs> and he, it's like fifty At stories, least. and he comes down, and he lands, boom, superhero, kind landing. of like a Black Widow pose, like with yeah. his hand on oh. the ground and yeah. his and his like hand and his sword up, and he's like, "Forgot my sword, forgot my sword." <laughs> hey, we're all Whistler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even Blaze Whistler now. <laughs> I forgot my sword. Forgot my sword. <laughs> my sword. <laughs> All right, so the vampires have arranged for- uh, How did they get out of that situation, by the way? That was it. They just left. Oh, someone pulls up, and the guy goes, get in! Get in! (laughs) There's 40 cops here. Yes, it was Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's like, get in! And they're all shooting, and they get in the car, and Blake goes, who the hell are you guys? And he's like, we're called the Night Stalkers. The Night Stalkers. Took a lot of work to come up with that one. Is this a comic book thing? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. You know the Night Stalkers. Yeah, um, you know- uh, Hannibal King. Hannibal King. Hannibal King. This is Ryan Reynolds. Hannibal King. They call him King. This is Abigail. (laughs) Whistler's daughter. Abigail Whistler, Jessica Biel, Abraham's daughter. They invite Blade to join their band of vampire hunters. Hey, hey, Whistler Jr., how'd you get into this? She goes, I went to my dad when I was a kid. I said, I want to be in. He said, no, I've been doing it ever since. Yeah, And And she's born out of wedlock. Mm. She's not part of the two that were killed. Three or two, I don't know. His whole family His was killed. Oh, two daughters. Well, the has, yeah, they wrote that in. Like, yeah. yeah, I didn't even, I didn't care. Retcon. I was like, it's his daughter. I Retcon. assumed like, I'm yeah. like she, I thought she lived. <laughs> no, they did make a specific point to say that. So yeah, I exactly. Yeah. Thing. Uh, from then, Blade learns that Danica Talos, an old enemy of King, has revived Drake with the goal of using his powers to cure vampires of their weaknesses. At the first of the vampires, Drake is able to survive in sunlight. 
So this is like the goal, He's a day right? Walker. Yeah. So let's it's just let's just been the goal. So a mess, right? So far, so far, In so many movie. things have yeah. happened, and you're like, oh my. Okay, so just recapping. It's like we're bringing back this guy because it's going to help us be like stronger vampires. We got to keep Blade out of the way, so they're trying to keep Blade out of the way. Yeah. And now it's all like intertwined. Mm-hmm. And and these night stalkers are like aware of this. They've been doing research on Drake and Dracula the whole time. Like, how do we defeat them? And then how do we kill them more efficiently? Right. And I'll tell you how they do it. Super gear. Yeah. yeah. Super vampire gear. Is... Uh, what about ultraviolet sun dog ammunition? Yes. Like, this, I yeah. shoot you with a bullet or an arrow, and it turns into the sun. It explodes ultraviolet light. She has the bow and arrow, like you said, with the ultraviolet yeah. line. Yeah. Arc light the arc. or whatever it was. They so have cool. that shotgun with, like, three different barrels that does diff- yeah, takes all different shoots, types of ammunition. Shoots silver stakes or sun dogs. You name it, it'll shoot it. And the ultimate goal for this team... Uh, back to the blood, as always in Blade. It's like so blood, you know. Yep. It's like okay, we need to get Drake's blood to create a experimental bio weapon that we're gonna call Daystar, and it's capable of killing vampires at the genetic level. However, they need a pure blood source to make it effective. Drake is too powerful to kill via normal means. They hope that the virus will kill him, and with his blood in the mix, ensure the rest of the species is wiped out. Bad news. Very dangerous. Might kill Blade. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he's a daywalker. But he's, he's a vampire. Did you guys enjoy the part real quick where where the Night Stalkers are showing all their tech and then they, they pull up a piece of his suit, like his oh, armor? Yes. And she goes, the, the, uh, we were uh, able to... the guy from King of Queens goes, we were able to extrapolate <laughs> what we believe he looked like. And Pat, <laughs> a Pat piece Noswald. of his suit, Pat Noswald. <laughs> Pat Oswalt is they in this film. They have the tiniest yeah. scale of his suit. It is a chip of his armor, yes. and they are able to extrapolate an entire... <laughs> the data. And they know exactly what he looks like. It just like builds him in yeah. this little AI program. And this is what it looked like. And I'm like, oh, sick is technology. Is that how that works? Wow. 2004 was lit. Yeah, it's like, yes. we can make, we can make, this is exactly, he looks this like is this. How I, this is why we can't get back to the moon. It was, yeah. it we was, just lose this technology. It was literally just like Dominic Purcell, like in Prison Break, like a picture of him. Like, it's like, that's like me finding your shoe and being like, and taking it Sam in and scanning like. it, and they know exactly what you look like. Yeah. And what was I, what was I wearing? Yeah. Bizarre. Go on. Sorry. No, we're doing great. We're doing great. Well, we, I, and we're doing like kind of these in big chunks. Anything so far you guys feel like we didn't cover? Blades teaming up with the Night Stalkers. A lot of quitty, whippy banter. Ryan Reynolds, it feels like to me, like it really felt like he was doing his jokes to Blade. And uh, it, like Wesley Snipes just, like really wasn't actually having it. And no, that's what made it into him. the movie. Just that is exactly what him. happened. I think, I think during we'll the movie. We'll talk about it after yeah. the movie. Oh, you got some stuff. There's but, a whole bunch of okay, stuff. Okay, good. And we got yeah. some trivia. We got some fun facts. There's a bunch of stuff. All right, so sticking to the story, returning to the Night Stalkers hideout. Oh, man, this is where it all goes south, okay? You have, what's her name, Leon? Uh, Natasha Leon Summerfield. 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 She plays, like, the blind scientist that works for the Night Stalkers, and she's done all this research, and she's, like, back at the home base while, like, Blade and the team are out trying to, like, battle Yeah, they're they're fighting familiars. And we see this, right? We see the battle of the familiars. We see Blade fight Drake, like, one-on-one for the first time. Yeah. And that's kind of like a whole thing. Like they're they chasing him. Uh, he, they they find a lead that the doctor. They're like, oh, the doctor. He's got to have the information. Yeah, Vance. Him. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go to his office, and they bust in, and there he is. It's the doctor. Get him. Yeah, and they go around on the side, and they see the doctor dead on dead. the ground. They're yeah. like, um, shapeshifter. Shapeshifter. It's him. It's Drake. He which, can shapeshift into other humans. Which the Night Stalkers told us that. Our our research has told yeah. us that he turn can it into bats and smoke. Probably not. Probably not. But shape shifting. Shape shifting. Maybe with some General practice. Shape shifting. Probably. He goes maybe with some practice. Yeah, it could be possible. Well, eager to test Blade, Drake isolates Blade from the Night Stalkers and explains his view that all humans and vampires are inferior in his eyes, and he intends to wipe them from the earth. This is like a multi-building chase scene. Yes. Like uh, Civil War with Captain America and yeah. Bucky. Yep. Yes. Yep. Lot, you're just moving through so much running, yeah. chasing. We get the going roof. through apartments. Yeah. We get the rooftop, we and should... all of a sudden he's got a baby. He's par- yes, he's got the parkour. baby. He's parkouring. Hold- park, a lot of parkour. Yeah. But Drake's holding the baby off to the side. and yeah. He's even a lot. He's like, yeah. <laughs> kind of he's taking care of it. Cradling yeah. the baby. Cradling. Sure. He's he goes, like, like, these men don't know honor and fighting with swords. Only we understand yeah. that. And Blade's like, I do. I yeah, do I get do. that. I do yeah. like my sword. <laughs> totally do like a sword. 
<laughs> he collects swords for sure. Yeah. Okay, Abigail finds evidence of the vampire's plans for the human subjugation part of Drake's plan, which is a network of blood farms. Yes. Where brain dead humans are drained of their blood for vampire consumptions. It kind of looks like a bunch of people are in clear, like Capri Sun packs stacked to the ceiling. Yes. Which I've got to call back Very to this accurate. later. I don't know if you do, Scotty. To this, um, to this scene with the blood bags. Let's the do human it. blood bags. You want to do, do it. it now? Go ahead. Go ahead. Blade one. Uh huh. The opening club scene where they're in the meat from, manu- the, from the first, the season, first, first blade. movie. Yeah. That you know that guy that's going in the club scene. They're walking. He's like, where are we walking? Oh my god, where are we going? We're in a factory. Is this a meat factory? You see body bags, meat, like like hanging up. Like the same thing. The exact same thing. Yeah. Apparently, they perfected. They wanted this to be part of Blade One. They dropped that entire plot too line. early they said they're like no they're like we don't even we're just gonna bail on it's this not but it's go in anywhere. that movie the same body bags hmm. they were that was they were gonna go with the whole body. like don't they're like don't throw those away the blood farm <laughs> was gonna happen in we'll blade one throw it away in blade one said let's not go that route pops up in blade trinity and it looked pretty good yeah so yeah. if you rewatch that movie oh, that yeah. club scene oh, and there's will, another actually. scene you'll be like oh those were body bags of people that was it. They were like it was always in the works. Yeah. This looked pretty cool too. It was like a warehouse, like so, super tall. Believable. Like it, it, oh, it looked legit. If I was a vampire, this is what I would do. Yeah. Part Absolutely. Of me, part of me was like Cuz you always think they're like, "Well, what the hell are they going to do?" Yeah. And all this shit. Like, they kill everybody. I mean, it seems so organized and like well done. Like like you got like so many bodies in here and they're like, "Who where'd they come from?" And they're like, "They're like homeless people yeah. that people don't care about." Even we the chief can't the chief of police people. is in there showing her. Yes. And the he's chief like, of police. I mean, what else would these people be doing? They're they're solving a problem. I know. Yeah. And I was like, "You know, you almost like had it. You almost could have done this." Yeah. Like there's already like the American right. Red Cross came up with blood donations 50 years ago, yeah. like 100 years like a long time, maybe yeah. longer than that. I don't know. Some war, I'm sure. Some yeah. war where they were like, we, we need more blood. Even Morbius, he was. Yeah, like what? You could just ask people to like sign up and like give yeah. so much per day. Like it's like, hey, this is kind of what I need. I don't eat bread. They're like, don't. No, we'd rather <laughs> just, just put them into this. Uh, I don't eat bread. <laughs> we'd rather put them into this coma and just zip them up. And Blade, what's he do? Uh, deactivates the farm's life support systems. Executes the familiar cop who has been rounding up humans for all the vampires. Shuts the shit down. Essentially, uh, mm-hmm. I assume all those people just died that were hanging. Yeah, you said they've been braided in for. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's like, at least we're not feeding any more vampires. Yeah. All right, returning to the Night Stalkers' hideout, this is where Abigail and Blade find all of them dead. Mm-hmm. They are dead, uh, except for King, who's been taken hostage. The kid, yeah. And Zoe, the little girl. Yeah. It was just like a little girl. Just a little girl. We don't really get a whole lot of backstory. Yeah, this isn't like the new Jurassic Park movie where the little girl is like a big mystery part about the story. Like this is just like literally a little girl. She was like just a daughter of someone. Yeah, this was just a plot point. This I thought she just, might it was be the like blind girl's daughter, was it not? I don't she, know. It was, but she was like the was scientist, she? so I thought she'd be like I, just I cloned she took her, her under her wing. I this don't might even just know. be like an orphan kid that she I really that the just, group adopted. Yeah, the much backstory is this chick got this little girl. It's just plot. That is it. Yeah. And she goes, go yeah. hide, like Plot I device. told you to. And she goes and hides, and Drake finds her immediately. Yeah. And he has that scary face. And, like, can we just say it? They just rip off a predator. Like, yeah, yeah he goes into kind of a predator. He always does. It's in the dog, yeah. the little shih tzu. Yeah. And the pit bulls at the end, or Rottweilers. That's whatever. how we see Ryan Reynolds next, is with that little dog. He wakes up, and that little dog with the predator faces the in his face. He's like, what the? There comes another yes. F bomb. This is a hard R movie. What the fuck is that? And he. Stands up and he's chained down and he's he's captive. Okay. These guys, we want the truth. Where's Blade? We'll torture you. We'll turn you. Yep. We'll make you a vampire. We'll make you eat we'll, this little kid. We'll turn you we... and you'll we'll starve you and yeah. you'll eat that little kid, Zoe. You won't be able to help yourself. Blade and Abigail arrive and free the captives. Drake eventually bests Blade in combat and prepares to kill him with his own sword. Abigail fires the Daystar arrow. This is getting to the end. Yeah, we're very we're- end. Blowing through this movie, which I wish it oh, would have went faster in real life. In real life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't forget that uh, I would Elizabeth, to... Elizabeth Banks threatened to. Uh... <laughs> Parker Posey. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Parker Posey. <laughs> Shit, I forgot on was here. Threatened to. <laughs> are you sleeping? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are. No, go, you guys you're are, up. You you're up. Keep uh, going. You're on. Threatened to feed the little girl to Ryan Reynolds, basically. Yeah. Said, uh, basically, yes. said, I'm going to turn you and. Like, starve you yeah yeah to, to get information out of them luckily that that didn't happen I, in my head for a second i was like <gasps> they're not gonna do it are they yeah and he I had mean, been a vampire before now he's not a vampire yeah. anymore which really if you're thinking about it that is the worst way to get to him 
Like, yeah. okay, he's oh, already yeah. been he's, a vampire. What are you going to do? Being a vampire. This guy being a familiar. His his attitude is so like cavalier, yeah. nonchalant. You can't really Fun mess with loving. him. Well, you could mess with him by making him kill a little girl he's known for X amount of years. Yeah, She's yeah. like, At why don't you one... tell us where Blade is? And he goes, how about two things? One, your hairdo is ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. And it was. <laughs> two, I don't even remember what two is. <laughs> and she, like, she just gets really upset. And <laughs> she goes, and uh, you guys are in big trouble. The cavalry's coming. There's a chip in me. <laughs> where if anything goes wrong, the satellites lock in, and here comes the cavalry. Three... Two, one. He's like, it's in my right butt cheek. <laughs> yeah, she goes, no, where is it? <laughs> Slap. It's in my, my left, left butt, butt cheek. cheek. Slap. Oh, and there's silver dust going yeah, through the silver he night. Silver he explains, night. He's like, well, at the... this point in time, silver dust is running through the AC system. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, Triple H. Is like, <laughs> yeah. Triple H. <laughs> Which I thought Triple H was going to die at that like, moment. I was yeah. like, oh, this is. Belched like... out fire. I, I really no, like the. You can't kill Triple H. I really like the <laughs> meetings of like Triple H and like Danica. And they're like, we had Blade in our grasp. Like, what <laughs> happened? She shot him in the eye with the arrow. She just like kicked someone in the face. Like, what the hell? I love how she went back to that one meeting when he had that arrow in his eye. And like, he yeah. walked all the way back from their one. He's got an arrow. That was. Earlier in the film, yeah. but he's got the air on the eye the entire time. All right, uh, so we talked about King getting tortured. Um, we've got we've got one arrow, one chance. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, this is where we learn uh, they go, they free the captives, and they get King out of there. They bust him out. They get back to the place, and we hit, there's a video from Summer. What's her name? Yeah, Summerfield. 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 The scientist, the blind scientist, and she says, "I figured it out. I made one serum, and it's it, experimental. It's experimental. But if you get it into Drake, it'll kill it'll every vampire kill within all. proximity." Which, which I don't get how she said, "If you're seeing this, I'm dead." And so, yeah, so take care of Zoe. How does she know Zoe's alive? She's just right. assuming because yeah. she's like told Zoe to go hide like she always okay, did. Okay, okay, okay. Not a bad plan. Yeah. Um, so we got caught. And it's just bad news. And she goes, Blade, it's probably going to kill you too. Sorry, we didn't have more yeah. time. We didn't mm-hmm. have more time yep. to work it out. And maybe Which, be in this scene, did Whistler show up? All right. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. Tell us what happens here. She's blind. She's like walking around, and you're like, oh, there's Whistler. So Drake has. Which uh, Whistler sh- earlier in the movie, we assume he just got blown up. He got blown up. So it's this almost Drake. It's Drake shape shifted into Whistler. But like, like I when didn't. He not- broke into the facility. When did he maybe even- he was trying to like. How did he even meet Whistler? Guys, I'm so dumb. This is where. But you why? Know, just you just told me just now. Yeah, but here, was here's Drake. the funny. Here's the funniest part about this scene. <laughs> I just learned that. It's. I think the the storytelling That's had great. fallen apart. Yeah. It had fallen way. apart thank because you, she's blind. You. Because I was like, what the hell? She's well, blind. I mean, he exactly. didn't go in didn't there just sense. for her though. I know, but it was kind of like he was trying to. F- it was you a know what moot, I was, but it was I don't a wasted know how shape he ever. Knew what Whistler looked like, and exactly he died That's why before I didn't, he had like exactly. even met who you even know who he was. Him. Like, did Abigail have a like picture? A picture of he him? had to kill Vance before he became Vance. And do you think he was standing there as Whistler, and he was like, oh, "So shit, guys, this girl's blind, and no one else is even here." It's I literally was going to be, be like, I have in my <laughs> yeah, notes. I'll just go back to being myself. I have in my notes Whistler. Vampire? <laughs> I, I'm so glad you brought it up because I wanted to talk about I'm that. I'm so confused. This wouldn't be the first time he had been turned into a vampire. And now that you told me, I'm even more confused because there's no point for Drake to turn into him. All I no. really was thinking or, was, I'm so happy. Or, Whistler's back. They Plot had Chris Christopherson he... for an extra day, and they're like, what can we do? Yeah. Oh, just make him Do you want to get paid again yeah. a little more? A couple extra hundred bucks, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, sorry. Stop saying lo- sorry we... for talking on the podcast. I, lo- I, got... learned, I learned <laughs> something. <laughs> We've got one shot. You put it in a bullet yep. or an arrow. And it's going to be an arrow. Of course. Whistler Jr. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like a big fight scene between Drake Blade and Blade. And, Blade. and it's like a big battle. Like, yeah. This is the sword battle. Lots He's of... wearing like full on like night gear. Yeah. yeah. Like like Drake. Drake yeah. is like in full on like night gear now. This full Dracula garb. All right. We didn't talk about the him going into the vampire store. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, the... oh, you guys got any vampire what... stuff? And the guy goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Which was this yeah. supposed to be like a hot topic or a vampire store? Because I missed the entrance. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it should it have been like, a hot topic. It was like a hot topic. If this movie would have made, been made like five years later, like it would have been a hot topic. Like they would have been like, we got to get this brand spot. So and he like he ends up killing them. I thought that was Billy was Joe like at first behind the counter. I was like, vampire is that Green Dildo? Day's Billy Joe? Green Day? Ever heard of Count Chocula? Count yeah. Chocula brand Which, spot. Whoa. Idiots. 
all over. The guy's eating it. Oh, my God. Did that guy God. just have milk at the store? Procter & Gamble or Kellogg or yeah. whoever it was, yeah. like, they got all over this one. They're like, wait a minute. This is going to be a hit. We need to be Prom on this. placement. Yeah, we're going to be right, right next to the va- uh, vampire dildos. Vampire dildos. That made it in. She goes, here you go. Yeah, which those were custom made for this movie. You could. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, we got. I mean, I'm trying to like. This is the end. Yeah. And I mean, once it's over, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, all right. He's they're, fighting they're Blade. Fighting. It's like okay, he might be getting the better part of Blade. Yeah. And he's like getting ready. To, he, and this this line ready to die, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. That's what he said. Which yeah. he just learned. He, he just literally learned that was Six that was it. Right. Fight scenes like earlier. That. So he learned I it. Mean, he used it. And she does the dumbest thing in the world and shoots through glass, which and th- he hears it. Turns around, catches the serum. Total Loki. Total Loki mode. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for the mist to come yeah. out. I know. You can see like Didn't... where all these things come yeah. from. You know what I mean? Like It's like a progression. And he drops it, and he's like, all right, back to killing Blade. And she shoots again. She and this shoots time him again. Hits him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's cool with it. Yeah. She should have shot the bad arrow first. Right. Yeah. And then Blade, the glass. Blade gets his hand on it, shoves it in, and we get like the scene of like it being, it, like it takes effect. Yeah. Looked like something from House. Like, you know, you got like the- uh-huh. Disease flowing into the blood drop through the anatomy and, of the body. Yeah, turning I black. Like I said it was a it, a compressed gas, and then it's a liquid. I don't know. I was confused. Yeah. Killing a ki- like killing the heart, turning black, yeah. and he and he just like starts to fade away. And yeah. before he does though, this is like great. I was like Wesley Snipe wrote these lines. He was like, "You fought with a sword, with honor. I can respect that." And like. Yeah, because like, he like becomes human, yeah. and like as he's becoming like human, and his vampire goes away, it releases the biochemical weapon. Yeah, it starts, and we get like the the view of like the cells the in the air cells. changing, and any vampire that's around just dies. Die, uh, yeah, immediately, immediately. And then he he also says they they were trying to they resurrected me to right. try and. Create the create perfect, the perfect vampire, the new vampire, the new perfect vampire. But, but they already had it. You already exist. They already basically. did, and it's you. And, like, it's it, you and like it wasn't enough. Even that, you're it's already, like, exactly like it's you. It's you. You like, are the daywalker. You're an idiot. At the end of the day, we said that. This, yeah, you're they wanted a daywalker, and now they got him. And, and they are, had, and they always had. They always had one. Him. You had him with since Drake? 1998. They've had you since 2000 BC. You had to wait till 1998. Up until the tax evasion. Yes, <laughs> which we should get into, I think. Get into what? Tax evasion. Oh, well, oh anyway, right. Yeah, let's dive let's right in. The, count, the, the counting in them. <laughs> so they're just all dying. All the vampires are dying. Including the Danica. Dogs. Yeah, Danica's beating on. Which uh, uh, King is getting beat by Danica yeah. by the slowest, most intimate choke. Oh, she's like, she she's like, wants she's, to watch him. What was like, she saying to him? Away. His arms, you watch it again. He's just like kind of holding her. She, he's just getting choked. She was saying and, the weirdest things. Yeah. She was like, yeah. just hold on there. And he's like King, barely doing anything. I was like, why is he not fighting back? <laughs> it was sexual. I mean, yeah, it was it's sexual. Like, well, he was, I mean, he's I, human. I imagine like vampires are super strong. She, he's human. Yeah, she, he didn't have a chance. And she was like, she's like, I'm going to lay you down on these stairs and kill you real looks slow. looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> planking on stairs like that. Um, 2004, planking was huge. You're she right. died. You're right. <laughs> he did warn Blade as he died. You know, Drake says you're gonna eventually some succumb to that thirst for blood. It mm-hmm. happens. It happens eventually. Yeah. And then he, uh, using the last of his power, Drake shape shifts. No, he says something about I'll give you a parting gift. I'll give you a parting, parting gift. He's yeah. like, oh, what is we it? We don't see. We don't see what happens. Yeah, we just see two like guys laying there. Laying he, like, there. Drake's laying there. Breaks laying there. Let me and allow it, me to give you one last parting gift. And they jump to the FBI, FBI in like a uh, morgue, like mm-hmm. a mortician's office, and the body's on the table. It's Blade. Blade. Blade Blade's dead. <gasps> We're gonna do the autopsy. And there's a little tattoo on his like chest, yeah. and they like wipe it away. And this allows. No, they were they it, were cutting. They were they about were to cut his into chest. His chest. And but as they started scalpel. to cut, it morphs away. Yeah. It morphs away, and it's Drake's body. It's Drake's so that body. was his parting gift. I'll be the dead body. If you're watching, if you're after watching, he's already dead. If you're watching the correct ending to the movie, yes. Oh man, this is good. And man, yeah, like they really like it, it leans on the fact that like Drake is like tracking like what the police and the media like think. Right. <laughs> he's like, don't worry, I'll uh, help you with the news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like okay. I just I <laughs> just came to PR life from show. two thousand years ago, but I already know about the news. I've seen the vampire dildos. Yeah, we've got. I'll, I'll take care of you. Yeah, like if only you. his trick could have lasted until he got got in the bot in the ground. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, this is Blade, and then five minutes later, like it's not Blade. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
And this leaves Blade free, continuing to fight his never-ending war against the forces of evil. Insert the ending monologue from Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Yep. And he Bookended. jumps in his car and like... He's on a bicycle, a, a motorcycle. A motorcycle, that's And it it's like they're doing like time-lapse from the downtown, but like Mo- Blade's not time-lapse, and he's just riding through the middle of like the most busy traffic, yeah. and he just yeah. zips right through the middle out into the sunset, and it's like, continues. Credits. CGI'd cityscape. And it's credits, and it's over. Yeah. Like in that 10 yeah. minutes, it's like the fight, and it's over. And it goes to the credits, and it gets to the end, and it's like Blade Trinity, produced by whatever. It's like the very last thing. And then the last thing it says in the credits, word. <laughs> Just the word, word, word. And it word. stops on word in all capital letters. And there's an end credit scene. In this movie. You're teaching me this. I didn't stick around. In the end credit scene, you're l- lucky. Don't worry. This is where he gets in his car. All right, so he's just in a car, and it kind of zooms in on him, and he's this driving. This is Blade? Yep, and he, he's driving, and he drives off, and it ends. And that was it. Driving off twice. Driving off twice. He's Things we now. already knew. Blade Trinity. Now Oscar. I got four Oscar. Material Oscar right there. For what? All right, you want you want to talk about the alternate ending? Didn't, do you guys know about the alternate yes. ending? Yeah. I thought I was watching a recap because I was like, well, maybe there's something I missed or some fun facts. I'm watching this this recap, and this recap is using the alternate ending. So I'm watching, and I go, did I just watch like the wrong movie? I'm like, <laughs> what did I just watch? Because I did not see Blade on the table get up and then you know on the morgue table on the gurney. You didn't see that, and then. Wake up and fight the nurses in the yeah. the what? FBI agency. Yeah, in that's a, that's an alternate ending you saw. Yeah, yeah. How'd they, you see they filmed it? it? No, I was watching this recap. Oh, a recap. Yeah. And the video was deleted, using the deleted. That's alternate. was using. That's well, well according to Wikipedia, tell me if this matches up. Yeah, alternate ending from Wikipedia says Blade Trinity in the unrated extended edition. Uh-huh. The body in the morgue does not transform back into Drake Blake. Blade awakens in the autopsy yeah. and begins and attacks the doctors and the FBI agents. The scene ends as he menacingly approaches a cowering orderly. King narrates, the virus Shh. did not kill Blade as the human half of his heart did not stop beating. It only slowed down, causing him to enter a comatose state until his body was ready to fight again. Yeah, which yeah. is So he's in a coma. That's what he coma, And it ends the same way. With just him, yeah, you know, him driving away off. and all that crap. But that gurney scene of in the morgue is uh yeah, him fighting. It's okay. still it's still uh Blade. And there's another end credit scene. Or I'm sorry, alternate which I would, alternate ending. Which I would love to see how that tied in. Did they cut out the part where he says, Let me leave you this Drake says, Let me leave you this parting gift. Does that get that, cut as well? It was probably added last minute. Yeah, I yeah. hope. Because that would make no sense. You're like, what the fuck? In another alternate ending, the Night Stalkers reappear six months later, having tracked a werewolf to a casino in Asia. I think there were uh, a planned possible spinoff Night Stalker movie. Definitely. With werewolves and... All right, guys. Anything you missed from that the, gets I mean, really all muddy. The vampires with, are dead. So. That gets really muddy with Van Helsing and the werewolves. There was also supposed to be a, a team up with uh, Underworld. I think really yeah. like a crossover. Yeah, that'd be cool. If they could have like that's with uh, um, what's her name? Yep. Be- uh, yeah, Hottie. Uh, Be- Hottie, Mc- Hottie McTotty. Yeah, you'd have Jessica Biel and Ooh. what's her name? Beckins. Kate, Kate Beckinsale. Yep. Got it. All right. How about some fun facts and trivia from the movie Blade Trinity, 2004? IMDb helping us out when he was asked what it was like working with Wesley Snipes on the film. Ryan Reynolds said sincerely that. I never met Wesley Snipes on this film, not for a second. Mm-hmm. I only met Blade. <laughs> That's everything I've read yeah. so far is that yeah. he went full Heath Ledger in on this thing. Yes. Yep. Uh, here's some goofs. Around two minutes in Blade 2, uh, we already talked about Blade tr- 2, but there's a connection, it looks like. There's a scene where it's pointed out that vampires can see quite well in the dark. This is the one I was talking <laughs> yeah. about earlier. Yep. Vampires using glow sticks. Uh, some funny quotes. Danica Talos. Enough. It's not funny anymore. Hannibal King. No, it's not you, you horse humping bitch. <laughs> but I will be a few seconds from now. See that tickle you're feeling in the back of your throat right now? Yep. Jesus. It's atomized colloidal silver. It's being pumped through the <laughs> building's air. Conditioning system, you 
cock juggling thunder cunt. Yeah. My God, rated X. Was that yeah. in the movie? Yeah, yeah, it was. Was. yeah. this is a Marvel flick. Jeez. He goes. I remember at one rated point. R. I, I remember at one point he goes to Pat and Oswald. He's like, serious question. Have you ever been laid? Yeah. <laughs> Just like, he's a, like yeah, yeah, he's like, by yeah, ladies. Times, by ladies. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> yeah. Crazy um, credits. Yeah, we talked about the crazy credits. We talked about the alternate versions. Uh, connections featured in Night Stalkers, Daywalkers, and Familiars inside the world of Blade Trinity. I'm not sure what that is. It might be like a documentary. Soundtracks might make it onto the music show. Thirsty. RZA. Written RZA. by R- RZA. ODB. Kurt uh, McGirt. Look at that. Big Baby Jesus. All right, let's. Uh, Tang. We got some user reviews, and we'll do our reviews to end us with some ratings. Uh, here's this from IMDb. Uh, well, we got a six out of ten here from I don't know who this person is, and I'm not going to read this entire review. I want to see just like a handful of reviews. I thought we killed the summary. Yeah, I think the we synopsis. killed the summary, the recap, yeah. the I retail. Mean, guys, honestly, if you listened, you don't really need to you watch need, it. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, instead some... of watching that for two hours. Listen to us for two hours. I would rewatch, and you'll get us. extra stuff. Yeah, yeah, you get the extra. There's and some good acting in there too. Well, let's do it. Absolutely, Giggler, kick Whistler? us off. Give us some thoughts on what you thought of this. I thought, when you're Whist- watching this. I thought Whistler was here with us yeah, this... on the pod. <laughs> what were you think? What did you this think about movie this movie? Had some things that I love: uh, action fighting scenes with karate and techno music. We get it. Uh, Jessica Biel was in there. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Jessica Biel is, is great. Naked too. shower scene. Uh, seventh Heaven. Uh, then we got the that guy from three heaven. from two guys and a girl. Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Oh my God, I love that show. We got to see some Ryan Reynolds ads. I need that show Um, to be streamed. He was stacked in this movie. I think that. Oh, he looked great. I just felt like Drake. Drake, sorry, Drake was not that imposing of a villain, really. Like as you would think that that person should be. Like this is a culmination of a trilogy, and it just didn't seem like Dracula really hit that hard. But no, he's no Thanos. Yeah, I think honestly, Triple H should have been the main villain. Uh, Let's go ahead, just (laughs) he could have been Dracula. Yeah, let's change that up. Like that's that would be way better. Um, But I think overall, I'd go with a rating of about. Originally, I went with a three point oh out of four, but I changed it to a two point eight because uh, dogs are dogs die in this movie, so that's automatic minus. They were bad dogs. I know, but they were still cute. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Adorable. That's sweet. A nice rating, fair share. Sam the sleeper. Yeah, this one just didn't do it for me. Uh, it gets bonus points. Jessica Biel, big fan. Shower scene. Thanks. I think we skipped that one. Yes, Scotty. That He's bloody piece. shower. It deserved scene. a little bit of a shout wow. out. I was waiting. Uh, we'll just keep that for a different podcast. But that <laughs> that was nice. Um, just coming off of Blade One and Two because I just watched them all. You know, either watch the movie or watch the movie plus a little recap. I'm coming off high on like one and two. Watching three just doesn't hit. I think there's tons of names in this movie. I mean, compared to the other two, there's just tons of names. There was parts of this movie I really wanted some callbacks to the other two. Yeah. And I think the obviously three different directors just doesn't get that done. You don't get, like, that guy in uh, Blade 1 that's set on fire within, like, the first ten minutes of the movie. Yeah. I forgot his name. Um, D- David S. Goyer didn't do the first two. He wrote them, but he didn't direct them. He didn't direct them. Okay, no. gotcha. No. Right. And so, you can feel it. Yeah. And uh, so, like, that guy that was on fire in the first movie, um, and you can tell in that first movie he's tried to kill, Blade's tried to kill this guy multiple times. Yeah. You again or something like that. And then he's like, we'll try fire this time. Yeah. So I'm, like, watching three, and I'm like, this guy has had, he's killed him, finally, in one of the movies. I'm like, he's got to come back in three. I just want to see him. I think he <laughs> ended up dying in one. Yeah, I think they hit him with the wire and decapitated yeah. him, maybe. But, like, he, he, he's made a comment, like, he's chopped him up before. Yeah. I don't even yeah. know. But I'm like, I want him back in three. So there's, like, little nostalgic things I want to see from one and two in three. You just don't get that. Um, and outside of just the big, I don't even know if they're big. I don't even know if Ryan Reynolds was known for, well, he's known for, like, comedies at this point yeah. in 2004. Van you know, Wilder. Yeah. It, probably. It, well, I don't know. Friends when, with benefits or when did, friends. Yeah. When did waiting Best come Best friends out? or waiting was, was probably right before Yeah, this. that's probably right around there. So, like, he's not known for this type of movie, and I do love that in hindsight. It's like, ooh, this you could see all the Deadpool kind of similarities with his character. Um, but in the end, it's just the storyline doesn't do it for me. Drake doesn't do it for me. To Hun's point, he's just not the super villain. No, it was just kind of like, okay. That the trilogy deserves. It's like you want... Somewhere that's going to be a bigger, a bigger opponent, and not just like fold into Blade. You you are you know you're the good guy. You're you, good. Oh yeah, yeah, Blade. You actually are the ultimate vampire. Just a little you know 
the campiness of this movie just didn't hit for me. I ultimately gave it a 2.2. Pretty nice. low score. Fair share. Scotty you Scoop, you ready? Go. Yeah, let's go. Um, so, <clears throat> by all reports, the making of this movie was an incredible shit show. Um, mm -hmm. Some. <laughs> Sorry, hold on, hold on. You got a lot of good stuff. Okay. So let me go first, get mine out of the way. All right, go Because I want to end with you, because I want to end with, like, the the rest. The dirt. Just my thoughts on the movie were, like, same thing that you were saying. Like, it doesn't even feel like parts of a trilogy. Yeah. It feels like three different things. Just, like, a totally different tone. Uh, on, and also, like, not as much, like, awesome action from Wesley. Like, it was kind of like... He took uh, a back seat. It, yeah, took a back seat. And also, like, just the fantastic ism of the first movie with him and the sword and the crazy poses and like he like the oily scenes and the intense like him getting the serum the first time like i like that part of blade i think that's like what set it over the edge and this just felt like i was here for ryan reynolds and i was always kind of looking around like where is blade like there is just not enough of like the story and i'm not committed at all to like he doesn't even feel like he knows why he's on this path and this mission you know, so uh, yeah, my rating is is not that great, unfortunately. Um, it does get saved by Ryan Reynolds for real because I feel like I don't know if I'm experiencing it backwards because like I've seen all of Ryan Reynolds' hindsight. career, yeah. hindsight, like seeing Deadpool and like even like his Deadpool, his first Deadpool iteration, yeah. and um, and he's done other uh, flicks where he got to play kind of like this action star, mm -hmm. and this felt like him being like. I can do this. Yeah. And that that was so fun, you know, just mixed with the vampire crew. And he's just leading it up. So really I think that he saved it for me. I'll give a rating of two point five. It's not that great of a movie. A little higher than me. Yeah. yeah. All right, Scott, your final thoughts. You got some tidbits so, and some behind the scenes stuff. We we've been promising this for like two years since the first episode. Uh writer director David Goyer uh said this is the most personally and professionally difficult thing and painful thing mm -hmm. he had ever been through making this film. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not a great review for We, we got a, a quote from Pat Oswalt. Wesley Snipes spent most of his time in his trailer getting high, was violent with the director, uh, David Goyer, and accused him of racism. Yep. Oh, God. This was um, in an interview, yeah. This was in an interview. Um. Wesley Snipes refused to interact with directors and co-stars and repeatedly called <laughs> Ryan Reynolds a cracker. And, and oh my Jessica God. Biel, that girl. That girl. Yeah, that girl. That so, girl. Wesley so when, Snipes said that? Yeah. yeah. So when Ryan Reynolds says he never met Wesley Snipes, he only met Blade, that is because Wesley Snipes refused to interact with anyone and, outside of actually acting. And he went to, and you might have this in your notes, sorry for mowing your lawn. No, you're all right. He relied on his body double a lot more in this movie than the past movies. And in CGI. They CGI, CGI yeah. yeah. They CGI'd him a lot. He did not want to be on set. He, there were certain scenes he wouldn't even shoot. Um, Snipes sued New Line Cinema for this movie. Really? Yeah. Um, saying that he didn't get paid his entire salary, and I'm sure that's because he probably didn't act in the entire, entire movie. Thing. Um, yeah, he said they they kept him out of casting decisions and directing decisions because I believe he was like a co co director or co producer because the, the first movie he was heavily involved he pushed yes. for it very he wanted, to be, mean, he wanted to be he black wanted Panther. wanted to be yeah. Black Panther yeah and they're like ah, how about Blade nobody knows who Black yeah Panther so he pushed is. nobody knew who Blade was own like but. side production company yeah well I mean almost like Ryan Reynolds has been pushing yeah. to be Deadpool for so long yeah. they um, even in this movie on uh, speaking on uh, him relying on body doubles and CGI that morgue scene at the end. That was apparently not even him. No, he probably CGI'd not. his yeah. eyes on. Not even him. He won't even do that one. Um, <laughs> he com he complained. No lines. It he cost ten grand. He wasn't enough uh, involved enough in the filmmaking process, and that his time was reduced on screen in favor of Ryan Reynolds and Jessica Biel. Which the final product? I uh, think it was. I'm, I mean, I might be on Wesley's side on this. And he was not heavily featured did, in this movie. He you, was a co-star. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Just a and, part of the team. And all those first two but movies. But I don't know that the movie suffered because of it. No, but those first two movies were so um He was the only karate, character. Karate, 
um, there was like all, all these call, not even callbacks, but just this origin of true, like almost not Mortal Kombat, but um, well, just nineties action. Yeah, like all Van this te- Damme, but technical, like, and he is, I think, Wesley Snipes is technical, technically trained in fighting in that yes. style. And this movie had way less of that. Well, it did. I think it was maybe a shock to him that they that he wasn't in the nineties anymore. Oh yeah, now he's got movie stars to compete with. Yes. Like, you're the draw here, but we need this to be, like, this is mid-2000s. And like you said, yeah, we're making it's different like, movies now. Yeah, It's like a, a mess from the start. Like, I'm looking at this uh, article from Screen Rant that the the script had an abrupt, had an abrupt change. Maybe you mentioned that. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you can just feel like they're just trying so many things. And, and you know like what they're the- trying They're trying to, like, bring in, like, the oh, the real world component with, like, everybody, like, finding out about Blade and vampires. Mm-hmm. And then they're, like, trying to bring in... Dracula, like right. literally Dracula. Yeah. Like and this count, is kind of um, yeah. <laughs> foreshadowing to the current Blade movie, which apparently Mahershala Ali complained that Blade wasn't in enough. Oh, really? And that this wasn't even, a, like he wasn't the main character in this upcoming Blade movie. So and they scrapped it and they, yeah, have like to, happened again. they had to rewrite it. Oh, yeah. so the, before it's even shot. Before it was even shot, they had he him, was complaining. They were about... like, he was complaining that I signed on to be this character before the movie was even written. Right. Which is how it works nowadays. Yeah. And Especially Marvel. Once they had the the script, he was like, I'm hardly in this fucking movie. Yeah. And I mean, think about how they introduced him with the uh, end credit I mean, scene. I'm, yeah. I'm not we, like. I don't know if it's confirmed, it. but like in credit scene of Eternals, you yeah. know, you get the introduction of Black Knight with uh, Kit Harrington, mm-hmm. you know, pulling oh, out yeah. the, the the ebony sword. I don't yeah. know if it's the ebony yeah, sword. Ebony blade. Ebony blade. Was it yeah. the ebony blade? It's the ebony. Is that blade. right? Yeah. I remember from I our episode. Is it dagger? No, it's just <laughs> I'm kidding. Right, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was is, a staff, it, is it a right? knife? <laughs> um, and it like that's it's a and you game. hear you hear the ominous voice in the background. Are you ready for that, Mister? Yeah. Whatever. And, Are you sure you're ready for that? And like I don't know. Sometimes the writing's on the wall with like these things where it's like. The way that you're introducing this character yes. is introducing another character. Another character. Yeah. Um, mm. Okay. So is, all is this that. A segue? All that being said, I fucking love this movie. It's my favorite of the three movies. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's your favorite yeah. of the three. Wow. After yes. all that, I love it. Absolutely. Ryan, like, well, yeah. All right. So go and give Ryan your thoughts. Ryan, Ryan yeah, Reynolds. Give your thoughts. Jessica Biel. You know, with a smattering of Wesley Snipes in there, slapping some people around. They brought Whistler back. I love that. Um, I just like the the jokey playfulness of this movie, um, and it's really just a Ryan Reynolds movie to me. Uh, that's what I love about the movie. I just give it a three point oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. See, I think you're, you're round table ratings. Big big rating, because I'm looking at this back in 2004. Ryan Reynolds does not have that that allure that he has now. Yeah. But it wasn't his fault. He's just like a player in the game. No, and it yeah. works. Yeah. It works. But back in two thousand four, yeah, I'm not thinking that is working. Yeah, I'm like, well, no, it this? doesn't. I remember like I seeing it. I don't even it. know who Deadpool is. Probably in 2004. no, I didn't know. I didn't know at all. And I saw this movie on like the TV at my neighbor's house, and I remember <laughs> being like, "Who cares?" Yeah. And I was, but I was like fourteen. Right. Like I was just like, I don't. And like, yeah, Ryan Reynolds. It wasn't like I saw him and was like, "Oh my god." Like, I didn't even know who he was. I no, was like, no. look at that crazy goatee. No, I'm probably watching this in 2004. Again, this was my second time watching it. Why is this so campy? Because you could take his fourth wall, you know, that fourth wall breaking mm-hmm. or that, hey, let me make a really weird, you know, a a, a joke out of nowhere tension. and break the tension. Yeah. You could take that back in um, early 2000 aughts as like this campiness that now doesn't read as campiness. Right. Now 2000s is campy. Yeah, but back then that you know it, it it would be fine, but yeah. like it just doesn't connect. Like it's like everything's me, so choppy. I like, like it more when I look at it through today's lens. Yes. Oh yes. yeah. Then then yeah. At but the I, time, I was going back. At the time, you're I'm, like, why is this guy cracking jokes in my Wesley Snipes movie? Yeah. Oh, I've seen one and two. There's no jokes. Yeah. But then yeah. you look at Wesley Snipes is like, I hate you. Yeah. yeah. And even when he says and on I the think gurney that, that one time, he's yeah. like, does he? He hates me, doesn't he? And he, he goes, sorry, me. I've had too much sugar today. <laughs> but, but he probably did. And, and he all the stuff did. you read after he the was film. A, he goes, why don't you get a little advice? Like, why don't you, like, talk to somebody and, like, fig- you need to figure some stuff out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's like, I like that. It's like, because I know what dead, I know what Ryan Reynolds end up doing. I know yeah, I know why he's doing this. Yeah, and it works. Yes. Well, yeah, and you, like, think, of, yeah, and you think about it, like, it maybe could have worked 
like had the movie been better. How did like, it take yeah. them so long to capitalize on yeah, this I'm, and make Deadpool? I'm not discounting at but they, all. They had I appreciate to. why you're giving uh, what did you say th- uh, a three. Three. I'm. I definitely appreciate why you're giving it a three. As and a I could, blade, and movie, I could even bring my you two point right. two. Up, two point two. <laughs> but as a blade, as a blade movie in at two thousand four, it just isn't hitting. We've yeah. seen like in game and. Spider Man No Way Home. Yes. Like like they've really they had to make that movie. They had to make these three movies. I'm not saying like you gave a three point oh, like I'm not shitting on Deadpool your Deadpool doesn't exist like, without this movie. Yeah, it doesn't. You have to go through like fa- like the the bumps in the road when you watch Fantastic Four. I mean, those are still pretty good movies. The Fantastic yeah, Four movies. I, I enjoy them. I I think they're pretty good. I think yes. Kevin and if you if you ask Kevin Feige, producer on the film, he's going, Hey, I'm I'm knocking on the fucking door right now yeah, yeah. and he was like he was knocking on the door mm-hmm. this movie was just before that and like no one had like a, such an obscure character and um like an iconic black character too like this is like the 90s and the early 2000s like and they do like these hard r things but yeah. then it's also like this third one's like comedy i don't i'm i'm honestly so pumped to see like this blade this new blade in a dark Serious yeah. and done like maybe really well. Like yeah, please. yeah, that actor is speak very well. Like it Ali, might be I'll like really his great, first name, but I really like uh, Mahershala. Mahershala Ali, I, I like him. I, I, I mean, trust him too. More in the vein of uh, Echo, Moon Knight. Oh, uh, Moon. Yeah, we're saying the same thing. Yes, uh, what they call now the Marvel Spotlight. Yes, like that's like you've got to do it. Like I, I don't mind a cameo. Put it in the end credit scene. Yeah. Like you know, or or like, don't break the echo was great. The the thing, yeah. Yeah, you know, we haven't talked about echo on this podcast really, but like the way they cameoed a big character in that show, you know, yeah. early in the season, and it doesn't affect. Like, I'm not gonna give you spoilers. You know, I'm so it makes me Wolverine. It makes me hungry for this <laughs> Blade movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm pumped yeah. that we talked about all three in the books. Blade Trinity, Wesley Snipes, forever a legend. I think yeah. the first one's my favorite. I one agree. and two it's are great, close. There, great me. film. It is it, good. It just it, goes in order for me. One, one, two, three. Blade Trinity. Anything else? Last call. That's oh, right. Did, Motherfuckers we, always have, trying to skate up hill. <laughs> skate up hill. <laughs> Ooh, I'm excited. One more Patton Oswalt thing that I saw. I saw an interview that of him. I was I I read I read about what he said, and I was like, I need to like hear this. Like, so I just went straight to YouTube. Went looked up Patton Oswalt, uh, Blade Trinity, and. Basically, he said that um, Wesley Snipes had, was basically only conversing with people via post-it notes, and he would sign them as Blade. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? So it would be like get my, like whatever his lunch order. Get my Blade, lunch. Or, I'm Watch out, today. big actor Andy Blade. over here. That does t- not. Blade. That does yeah. tie Let's in. Let's not get any good get ideas. Any- he here. starts right passing here? me notes. Yeah, yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> that does tie in, though. He was communicating through his assistant. <laughs> Tell that girl. Yeah, and that cracker. And what's up with Wesley Snipes in general? Didn't he like get into trouble or something? I don't know. Tax Tax evasion. Evasion. Taxes? The movie, the money he made on Blade Trinity did not pay taxes on. Did he? He physically went to jail, right? Yeah, a couple yeah. years. Yes. Yeah. Couple years. It'll be a whole podcast episode about Wesley Snipes. What life. has he done since he got back? A couple oh, of B movies. And I mean, think he about did it, the though. Expendables, right? Did he do the Expendables like did three he? or four? Or oh God, you're I'm losing five, count after maybe? how they we, kept coming out with those, and I was like, I'm losing it. Um, I don't know, but he, I mean, he I was hot. Pull up that IMDb. He was yeah, we got it. hot. Let's in, do it. In, click, in the click late nineties, in the late nineties, he wanted that Black Panther movie. He's like, give me oh, a Black man. Panther movie. He jumps on. What is the one he did with? Uh, uh, the I didn't kill my wife. Oh, uh, um, all right. So he's been in White Men Can't Jump. Yeah, that was like yeah. his demolition man. That was like the that big was his, one. This New, thing, yeah. New Jack City. That was his trampoline. Was There's thing. an upcoming thing called Paper Empire that he might be in. It's a TV series. Oh, that's old. 2023. Back, back on the strip. I mean, Moon Girl Moon and Girl Devil, and Devil, Devil dinosaur. dinosaur. Isn't that wow. a Marvel thing? Yeah. True Story coming to America. He was in because he was in the oh, okay. first one, right? No, yeah. he wasn't. I don't no. remember. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, Are that's sure? that's Eddie Murphy. Yeah, that's Eddie Murphy and um, and a, a whole oh, cast. Arsenio Holmes. But yeah, yeah, but he was yeah, in the yeah. second right. one for something. Wow, Cutler that City. Kind of look he was young. in Do- Dolomite <laughs> is my name. <laughs> what we do in the shadows. Expendables three. Expendables three. I stopped it. watching after maybe I watched half a three. Yeah, this is good. This is a good list here from IMDb. Let's keep going down. What well, th- there was another one he was in, that was a sequel. Game of Death, Brooklyn's Finest, something. The Contractor, Chaos. 
Blade Trinity. Have you guys seen that? Blade Trinity? 5.8 yeah. on IMDb. The just Art so of know. War, that one was good. U.S. Marshals, that's what it was, with Tommy Lee Z- Jones. Zigzag is uh, the produ- the director of three, I think, directed Zigzag. Goyer? Yeah. Two Wong Fu, that was a good one. Oh, Rising Sun, Demolition did you say Man. that? Rising Sun? Did you Rising say Major Sun? League? Yeah. Rising Sun was good. That was with, uh, did you say all this and I didn't listen? No. It's possible. Or am I just listening to myself talk in my head? U.S. Marshals was the one I was thinking of with Tommy Lee Jones, where he made uh, uh, Tommy Lee Jones was in The Fugitive. With, <sighs> yes. Uh, what's his name? I got his head. I got his. You got his head. I got his head right here. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana Jones. Yeah. Right? Uh, come on. Harrison Ford. Harrison Thank Ford. You. Jesus, Thank guys. You. I was like. I was, like, I was like, crash his plane. It wasn't me. It was name? the one-armed man. <laughs> Guy that can't drive a plane. Okay, we're going to big tangent city. Yeah, all, 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 that's yeah, get, all that's getting cut. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about what's coming up. It's mostly superheroes next. <laughs> what's coming up on the schedule now? Uh, lots of things. Mostlysuperheroes.com forward slash schedule. You can go there and you can see all sorts of things we're going to talk about this year. Movies that are coming up. Madam Web, Spider-Man, Spider-Girls, there's, there's Spider-Villains. Nothing, there's nothing we can do to stop it. Oh, no, I got my tickets. All, all you need to do is just remember Sydney Sweeney's in it. It's, Come on. And Dakota. Dakota it's Des- Johnson? Dakota Johnson. And she said that this movie, you're not ready for this. This is so different. We're not she ready is for right. this. We're, we're no, not. No one is ready <laughs> no. for this. It's happening. It's destined, Sony's, it's destined for fortune. This thing's going to be I've even amazing. seen how Sony's promoting it, and they're even saying, like, this is in a different universe. Like, even different. Even more different than, than, than Venom. Or, and Venom. It's like, meanwhile, in another universe. And I Another think it's on track universe. to do worse than Morbius. I can't wait to see it. I'm very excited just it's to Morbid see. It's Morbius time. I'm, I, yeah, Part of me loves these, like, I kind of like I'm Morbius. Back and forth, it's like, man, I really want them to fail. It's like sci-fi. So just give it back. It's like just bad. Marvel. It's like bad sci-fi. It's like, I But know. then again, you know, what I weird watched universe? Morbius and me and Lila enjoyed it for what it was. That's what I said. Oh, uh, Lila's rating for Blade, Blade Trinity. Yes. 3.9. 3.9. The <laughs> almost perfect, <laughs> almost perfect. My band of brothers she rating loves everything. Oh, yeah. That's good. Everything. That's there good. is just as many actors Same. in Blade Trinity as there was band of brothers as far as big names. Uh, all right, how about Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire? Man, I saw that trailer. Oh, new trailers, so more new trailers. Good. Dan, this is with Dan will be all about that one. Paul Rudd again. Paul yes. Rudd again. It's right after Afterlife. I'm so excited. We'll, you know, yes. Watch Afterlife. Watch so that. We got good. the Ghostbusters are all coming back. Except Dude, for, bring them know, here the on the one, podcast. Screw the that. Who's not alive? Uh, we're gonna have another Voltron episode coming up. Volume three from our friends at Four Hands Brewing Company released yeah. Volume three. If you don't remember, you know we got the whole mostlysuperheroes.com forward slash Voltron page where you can stay up to date with the collaboration. If Voltron, Defender of the Universe, uh, every lion is getting made as a single beer. Four hands collaborating with all these breweries, and they're going to have one mega Voltron beer. So, volume three, we're going to talk to Kevin. I emailed with him yesterday. We're going to next week or the week after talk about volume three. They partnered with uh, on that one was, I know it, uh, they did Narrow Gauge. It's right there. Uh, Southern Gris Brewing. And then volume three was Gris, uh, Nashville, uh, Hot, Hot Butcher, Butcher no, of, no, no, of no, the Butcher. World. Yes, Hot Butcher. What, was two Gris? Uh, Southern Gris Nashville. was two. Southern Gris. Yep, and, and then four's coming, so we'll keep talking about all of that as well. Apotheosis Comics, that's local comic book shop and lounge. We'll be sitting down with Martin Casas over there. Can't wait uh, for and just, that just a couple weeks. Yeah, He's very excited to have us. You we saw him just yesterday. We talked about it. We're excited to you be there. You talked about it? Yeah, their, their space looks awesome. They did a lot of renovations the last few weeks, uh, I guess, as they do every at the beginning of every year, I think they said. so. Oh, man. It looks really nice, and I was like, I can already see it, could see it happening. Like, yeah, like, they've made where, it. Where it's going to happen. The magic's going to be made. You can right see there. where we're going to be talking. Yes. Uh, yeah, can't wait to sit down with Martin. We're going to do an, a Marvel episode, an MCU episode, where we do like a timeline episode. Might be a, a bonus type spot. Uh, we're going to be at the Royale Food and Spirits. Uh, that's another local. That's my my favorite restaurant in town. Stephen F. Smith, the owner over there. Can't wait to sit down with him uh, in a few weeks. Star Wars fans, get ready. We are going to have a Star Wars timeline episode. We're going to just pull up the timeline and nerd out and have a whole episode all around it. You know Danny Patron will be here. Steve Ewing from The Urge and Steve's Hot Dogs is going to be here. We're going to do a collaboration with them for like May the 4th, it's looking like. 
Uh, and Steve Ewing himself is coming in the pod. Going to be awesome. highlighting some shows. We're going to play some music. That's all I'm listening to these days is the urge. Oh, Dude. I'm in the car. Yeah. Getting right? hectic. Driving too much, around. Too much stereo. Getting, getting a little brainless. Yes. Oh, my God. It's getting crazy. Dude, he is. wild. And he's playing <laughs> Steve Ewing band. He's playing all over the place. He's got the Master yeah. Blaster, uh, Stevie Wonder Band. They've got shows around all year. I mean, he's doing a show tonight that I saw him post. I was like, really? oh, man. Nice. It's like at, do you remember where it was at? It was like. Uh, it, I guess. I tap in Del Mar. I tap okay. on Del Mar tonight. <sighs> night Shit. you know if you end up dude i'm on the mm, biggest urge kick lately. are we about to mm, all i'm listening to is that. <laughs> it's friday uh and then it's my birthday we are let's get hectic. it is your birthday let's get hectic uh and we are doing we want to put out more this year like we've already put out a few episodes you guys can see we're going to be doing some bonus stuff so we've done some of the smallville rewatches to kind of follow along with the talkville podcast we're going to bring in scotty scoops <clears> comic <throat> corner getting more comic book stuff giggler's working on the newsletter we're going to bring in the newsletter back giggler just wait sunday I'm sitting down, probably taking an Adderall. Yes. <laughs> chuck one out. There you chuck go. One out. <laughs> it's like you're doing like college. Yeah. Like, you do yeah. like college homework. Here yeah. You're going to be on the Wheel of Fortune soon. Yes. Yes. And in the patron episode today, we talked about, we actually recorded Andy's audition to get on Wheel of Fortune. We need everybody to band with us. The giggler's going. I am inevitable. Yeah. There it is. You've got to bring that to the wheel. And you've got to use it to spin the wheel. Oh yeah, oh. you can do. You can do that. I sure. mean, you bought at Apotheosis, so you're wearing the Thanos uh, gold gauntlet, the Infinity Gauntlet, and then you bought it at Apotheosis the Nano Gauntlet Actually, Lego my, set. My right? My mom gave me that for my birthday. Oh, even yes. better. I know. I love it. Thank you, Paula. But so you also, could wear you, both. Paula. Thanks to my buddy Wyatt for this. He let me borrow this. This was just no, that's yours just for today. But oh. yeah, I no, it's Wyatt Remote Control wanna, Wiz. I don't want to give it back. Come on, I gave you freaking X Men blades. Those are dope as hell too. Oh you know, man, you needed one of those. Damn it! But this didn't get to make an appearance at all. Go ahead, so. show it now. But um, this is your champion's belt. It's his this, headband. This will be me. I mean, I, honestly. <laughs> Pat Vanna, if you want to throw me in for Wrestling Week as well, I would be w just happy w to dude. sit up there with. Can you imagine? With uh, anybody, even, I don't know, even Hulk Hogan these days. Even oh, Hulk yeah. Hogan. Oh, oh, just even Hulk Hogan. He's, he's been canceled, so. Um, oh, I haven't. Yeah. I'm not up on the. I thought he just rescued somebody from a car. Yeah, I was going to say, he's I saw that trying, the other day as he's well. He's trying to uncancel himself, but he's a huge racist. So he got that person yeah. in an accident and then rescued them? <laughs> he, he probably caused the he's whole staging. thing. He caused yeah. the whole thing to Hulk, rescue, Hulk smash. To rescue <laughs> his <laughs> PR? Maybe. All right, yeah, we're, we're getting Giggler and Wheel of Fortune. Andy, let's go ahead and do your final thoughts and goodbyes. What yeah. do you got? Anything you're looking forward to? Uh, and you know, what do you want to say to the fans yeah, before we wrap up tonight? Definitely pumped for Apotheosis being there the other day, um, and now signing myself up for a monthly comic run that I'll be up there probably spending uh, an exorbitant amounts of money every month now. So Scott, uh, yeah, Scott, I'm right there with you. Hopefully, you're gonna have oh, to download boy. the app. Yeah, I know. I was like, I was thinking that same thing. I was like, I like collecting entire sets of of comics that I like. That sounds pretty fun, especially yeah. if you got to go. Maybe search and find them. So well, that's where you're at now, completing your kit, your series, yeah, and buying sure. new ones. Yeah, uh, that's a journey I'm excited for. Peloton rewatch is going to continue. I'm really excited to start uh, Avengers tomorrow. Where can people so, follow you on Twitter? You're eight hundred six seven six seven on X. X. On X. Yes, yeah, or, sorry. Or right, anywhere. anywhere. Uh, I'm going to be saying Twitter forever. Me too, yeah. dude. It's 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 unreal. But yeah, I'm, I'm really <laughs> honestly, it's it's crazy. Like the, a month ago, it's getting crazy. I couldn't get myself to work out, and now I actually get excited every day to do it. And yeah, that's like a complete 180 that I so desperately needed in life right now. That's the way to go. That's That's really motivational. And you've given people a way, like, you can watch anything or listen to anything that, like, takes up time to help you exercise. And you can find fun ways to work out. That's, yeah. I'm jealous, kind of. I used to, I have done, I really have done podcasts where you put them in the headphones. It's like, you know, I just kind of lose track of time. Mm -hmm. My my feet are moving. Let's go. Yeah. We're not even going to recognize Han. I hope. In a year. I want to see you in just that belt again, just like yeah. the picture on the ceiling <laughs> oh here. My God. You right. look like Ryan Reynolds. Scotty Scoop, final round. Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> the year is stacking up already. There's lots of stuff going on. I, I think I've got more concerts on the schedule than I've ever had. What are you, who are you seeing? Uh, I got Sum 41 mm. is coming up. There's a final farewell tour. Uh, Green Day's coming. Nice. Going to go to that. Good. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers are coming. Wow. Yeah. Um, man, it's gonna be a big year. Big, I, I love the concert. See, we're seeing yeah. better lovers in a few weeks. Billy Joel, you're seeing Billy Joel. <laughs> I already seen him twice. I'm done. Wow, no more Billy Joel. No oh, more. 
All right, Sam Sleeper, uh, what's going on in your world, man? Uh, anything, Dude. any updates for Team Jakey or anything else? Oh, yeah, we got the standard, you know. We'll have the Team Jakey Cornell Tournament coming up in September 2024. Um, man. I'll throw out a date at some point. You never know. We might have a, a little sleeper event out there somewhere between uh, now and then. So you just never know. But I, I do have to say, outside of all that, outside of what I'm going to be doing in 2024, this may have been the most entertaining for me podcast in six episodes this one maybe not my favorite movie but i don't know why i just That's enjoyed it. i think i just had a blast That's on what it. it is like you, you know you get a movie and you're not too high on it but you want to but th this movie had so, so much, much to talk about talk about good yeah. or bad or funny or interesting i had a great time this was a solid podcast episode for me to be on i just enjoyed it i think we're i think we're hitting the stride here yeah I think we're kind of getting to it and talking about it and like a little help from online. Thank you, Wikipedia, IMDb. But uh, dude, here for here for you to always be here. I love when you fill that four seat. And uh, I, I'm I'm here to help you put on like that in between event. You know, so mostly superheroes are trying to do like we did a happy hour recently. We're trying. You, you guys were all there trying to do like in between stuff. If so. you guys do another little something, we'll sponsor it. I think uh, the screening social is kind of looking like it's going to happen. But there's a lot of stuff on the calendar, like Scotty said. So we're trying. We're playing well, by me, ear. Let me know if you need some help. You okay. know what I mean? If we All don't right. have an in-between thing, let's make, I make it a, happen. If I got a little bit of uh, a room in the schedule to help schedule something, do a little work on my end. Yeah, it'd be fun to get everybody put, get get to get get together. I can put in a little grunt work. All right, let me know. All right, we've worked together before. It's fun. Yeah. All right, guys, that's mostly superheroes. A jam-packed week, full episodes, a lot more coming. Subscribe at mostlysuperheroes.com. Tell a friend. Listen, watch. Tell us your favorite story, and we can't wait to see you next time. Take it easy.